ESPN, celebrating 150 years of college football. That familiar feeling returned. Football is back. Biggs throws it downfield. Touchdown, Williams! And the legend is born. Familiar names, but new places. Jalen Hurts has been just about perfect. Defensively, we are fighting for every blade of grass. If you want to make it, you better stand in the middle. Here in Tano, yeah, and the Panthers have recovered. They said the SEC just means more. Today's game meant more. Oh, yeah. Game ball and scholarship. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Notre Dame is back. This is good old fashioned Notre Dame football. Let's go to work. Louisville is back. Football is back. Notre Dame is hungry for a return to the college football playoff. They spent a long, hot summer training to gain the road warrior mentality. Notre Dame knows success or failure in hostile settings will define the Fighting Irish season. Tonight, they expect a dominant start in their first ever visit to Louisville. It's a night the Cardinals fans have circled for years. A new coach brings the program fresh energy and restored belief as the rebuilding begins. Will all their sweat and strain pay off instantly with an opening night stunner against number nine. On a hot night in Louisville, welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Capital One. The first ever visit by number nine Notre Dame to the Louisville Cardinals. They have waited a long time, the fans making this a blackout night. And welcome, Chris Fowler, Kirk Herb Street, Maria Taylor will join us. Pump that you're spending the punctuation mark of a five day college football weekend right here with us. They just played my old Kentucky home a minute ago. This horseman next to me is you're, you're pumped up and ready to go. I'm ready to go. And what a great weekend we've had. I mean, throughout the last four days, we've had some upsets. We've had some great individual performances. Some of the, the transfer quarterbacks like Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields really stepped up. And how, how prophetic that we have a chance to watch Louisville, new head coach, and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish kind of, put, as you said, kind of close the, the door on this opening weekend. Horse racing terms, it's the chalk against the long shot. Notre Dame off that playoff season, but that humbling loss to Clemson in the semifinals worked hard in the offseason to try to close that gap. And Brian Kelly has high expectations for this team. Sometimes they let inferior teams hang around a bit last year. He didn't want to see that happen. Tonight. No, I think after the way last season ended, they got to the playoff, but none of the coaches, none of the players are happy with the way the season ended. They're anxious to get back out on the field after the, the Clemson loss. And Ian Book is now a veteran. You know, last year he took over for Brandon Wimbush. I think a quarterback that has great command of Chip Long's offense. I think he'll make quick decisions. He's got some new weapons to break in with Miles Boykin and now moving on Dexter Williams both these guys now in the NFL really led them in receiving and rushing so it's a new opportunity kind of a new chapter for them to, to see where they are in 2019. He's facing a Louisville defense that had better be a lot better than they were yeah. last year five straight games allowing 50 plus in a lot of respects this place was a train wreck Petrino got fired at the end of last season and then comes Scott Satterfield who was very successful at Appalachian State he's already made some changes to the culture Kirk we'll see if it pays off tonight well that, that that's a big part when you take over a program, as you said. They, they, let's be honest. They quit in the second half of the season. When you give up 50, over 50 a game in five straight games, something's wrong beyond just X's and O's. And he had to just work on them in the culture, try to get them to hang out in the facility, just love on them, try to get their confidence back up. And it's a pretty tough test to come out and see how much progress you've made with, as a new coach when you take on Brian Kelly and a Notre, team, Notre Dame team that has big aspirations this year. They do. They've got to go between the hedges in Athens in a few weeks. They got to visit Michigan tonight. Their first road test, and the Cardinals come out. You can't help but get caught up a little bit in this energy. They go through a tunnel of their fans right outside the stadium here. Opening night in Louisville, the first ever time the Fighting Irish come calling. Cap off your Labor Day weekend with us right after this. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. 
And welcome back to Louisville. The Cardinals have just made their entrance. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Nice steamy night. Temperature at 79 degrees. It's pretty humid. Rain not in the forecast tonight. Brian Kelly begins his 30th season as a head coach, his 10th at Notre Dame, and he is with Maria Taylor. Hi, Maria. All right, Coach, you said that this team should look disciplined and mature in tonight's game. How can that manifest itself when this kickoff happens? Well, you know, taking care of the football, no, no stupid penalties, don't give up big plays. And, you know, we've been here before. Um, you know, we've got some young players, certainly. We've lost some really good players, but everybody does in college football. So, uh, but again, you know, control the elements. This is a great crowd here uh, a lot of emotion uh, but uh, control emotionally what you can control and eliminate the distractions we should be fine all right thanks for your time thanks Mary. Kelly and the Irish show was used to taking everybody's best shot when they go on the road and for Scott Satterfield who was part of three national championships in the FCS at Appalachian State who went in Sunbelt conferences in recent years going to bowl games excited to take this team to the field for the first time wasn't the first choice they looked at Jeff Brom hope he would come back here from Purdue but boy it's hard not to be impressed by him uh, very impressed with our meeting with he and his really his entire staff um, just a, 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 a refreshing approach and what they're trying to build here and it's going to take time from where they were to where they're trying to go but uh, I, I personally I don't know if he's first second third fourth choice I just like what I saw and uh, impressed with the entire uh, building yesterday that we had a chance to visit with. There's Jawan Pass. They call him Puma Pass, the junior quarterback who struggled at times last year and had a rough go with Bobby Petrino, hoping that a fresh start will bring him fresh confidence and better protection. Ian Book, you accept him to take a step forward this year? I do, and I think it's because, I, you know, last year, don't get me wrong, he had great knowledge of the offense, but like any quarterback, you get some game reps, you go into an offseason, you get a chance to self scout, you get a chance to work on some small things, like little things like he's undersized, so he has to work in the pocket, show athletic ability, not get out, but stay in the pocket, find those throwing lanes, continuing to understand in their RPO game, run pass option, where to go with the ball. So I think you'll see quick decisions tonight and a veteran quarterback with great poise. And Book will get the football momentarily. The Irish won the toss and elected to receive. So Blanton Creaky, the veteran kicker from Louisville, to boot it away. And that Louisville defense looking for immediate improvement. They were gashed, as we said repeatedly last year. Jafar Armstrong, Herman Williams are back deep for the Irish. Long anticipated night in this city that sits four hours due south of the Notre Dame campus. And the lefty boots it to the end zone and a fair catch is made at the two yard line by Armstrong. So here comes Ian Book. Of course, you know that he took over as the starter. Game four last year, now as a junior. It was a sobering evening against the Clemson Tigers, and he's tried to build on that. Absolutely. And, and the other thing I think we should talk about are the intangibles. More leadership. Last year, he was kind of a quiet leader. I think this year, he's taking more control. Brian Kelly telling us no matter who he is dealing with, whether it's offensive linemen, receivers, backs, even the defense, he has become a complete team leader. And I think you'll see that pay dividends for the Irish this year. No more Dexter Williams in the backfield, so the Irish will lean on a rotation. It's Tony Jones Jr. getting the start. Book on play action. Steps up and escapes. He's a good runner, and he's got a lot of space. Already bolting into Louisville territory and diving down inside the 40 as they forgot about the quarterback. Well, C.J. Avery shows blitz, the middle linebacker, and one of, one of the things he forgets to do is he you'll see linebacker show blitz up the middle. they got to get back and, and spy. If, if you don't spy, see how he has his back turned? He's looking for a crossing route, but... You have to account for an athletic quarterback. So mental air here for Louisville in the very first play of the season. And a career-long 37-yard run for Book as they feed Jones, who just muscles straight for about 10 yards. Irish imposing themselves early here. All five offensive linemen here began as tackles. Banks, Patterson, Kramer have moved inside. It's a good bunch. Sure is. Aaron Banks, I think, provides that really that power. I'm going to see if Chase Claypool is ready to become the guy with Miles Boykin moving on. We'll see a lot of backs. Jafar Armstrong is a running back, but can also play receiver. And Fink is outstanding, number 10. It's a two-back look, and Armstrong gets the handle, and he's going to bang forward for a first down inside the 25. Louisville's defense 
doesn't lack individual talent, Kirk, but they just lack cohesion and chemistry and effort at times last year. Yeah, G.G. Robinson, 94, is a guy that's got to make plays up front. C.J. Avery and, and Dorian Etheridge, both in the middle, are going to have to make a lot of tackles with the way they build this defense. Russ Yeast, the leader, moves from corner to safety because they play so much man-to-man -man on the slot. They moved him there to provide leadership, be the quarterback of that secondary. We should move half the field in three plays, and now Book flips it underneath to Armstrong. He breaks a tackle and muscles down for a first and goal. Well, when you have a crosser like this, it, it requires communication and a defense that's going to have their head on a swivel. Watch the defense, and nobody accounts for him. you got linebackers dropping. Nobody even picks him up. And then you can see the speed from Armstrong as he gets around the corner. And just like that, Notre Dame, after four plays, they've already gone 67 yards inside the 10-yard line. Armstrong running right, lowers his shoulder down inside the five. Th something to watch tonight. Chris, you touched on it. Louisville struggled in their last five games, allowing over 50 points a game, but they were bad versus the run all year. Over 303 yards per game on the ground in conference play. Dead last in the ACC. That's an area they're very concerned about facing Notre Dame. And you can see the domination in the trenches right now for the Irish. Jameer Smith takes his turn, reaches for the goal line, touchdown, Irish, as they take the opening kickoff 75 yards with very little effort. Yep. That time there's actually a defender there. He was there, but he got run through. Tiberius Peterson, 29, actually does a good job of getting penetration. He hits him right there, but he's unable to withstand the power as he goes right through him and into the end zone. They're taking a peek just to make sure he crossed the plane. Yeah, his knee didn't touch. He was stretching, and did the ball break the plane before the thigh hit? Right mm, close. I think the nose of the football yeah. was across. And so the Irish begin the season in dominant fashion. And Jonathan Dorr, the kicker who is one of the question marks here this year. He's struggled at times in camp. No problem with that PAT. Six plays, 75 yards, five of the six plays on the ground for Brian Kelly. He's got to be excited with the way this thing started. What an incredible way for Notre Dame to start the 2019 season on the road against Louisville, trying to establish themselves here early. Very first play of the game. Ian Book drops back to throw. He sees the linebackers clear out, picks up 37 yards. That kind of set the tone for the opening drive. Really, it's the line of scrimmage. That was the only pass of the first drive. Really, Chris, is more about the line of scrimmage and running the football. And the first career touchdown for the sophomore from North Carolina, Jameer Smith. So, Jawan Pass in the Louisville offense, as they did so often last year, playing catch up from the start against a pretty stout Notre Dame defense. Ball booted away by Dorr. And at the goal line, stepping in front, Hassan Hall, there was some confusion. Now he's trying to make something of nothing, and the Irish coverage team will swarm him at the 11. So now poor field position for Puma Pass. Out of high school, Notre Dame offered him. Everybody wanted this guy. He was a blue chip player. He obviously was the understudy to Lamar Jackson and inherited the pressure of that role, Kirk. Can he take leaps and bounds this year under the new coaching well, staff? Well, he's, he's going to have to try. 6'4", 240. Last year, he was a starter, but in the second week of the season, he was replaced by Malik Cunningham, and it was kind of a back and forth the rest of the year. I think it really affected his confidence and belief in himself and another player that they, this new staff had to try to bring back up to try to get himself to believe that he can be the quarterback and leader of this team. The handoff inside. This offense will look very different than what you were used to seeing under... Bobby Petrino, but the offensive line needs a quantum step forward. They gave up 43 sacks. Makai Becton is a future NFL player at left tackle. We'll keep an eye on the matchup with him and these great edge rushers for the Irish. The left side's a strength, right side's a concern. They do have some experience at wide receiver. Look for Fitzpatrick and Dawkins and also number one, Tutu Atwell to try to make plays. Atwell, there's a guy that they're undersized. They want to get him the ball in space. Hawkins got two on first down, and that pass will look for him on the sideline, and it's a nice back shoulder catch made by Seth Dawkins, the veteran of this receiving court. And look how starved they are for a big play. They're just happy. They go crazy. How about that great effort? Dawkins had strong hands, but I love the placement of the ball on the back shoulder. It gets away from him a little bit. That's a tremendous effort. They might take a peek from the other angle. Right here is a great look at it. I think he got his hand underneath. I think that's a reception. Great effort and a nice throw to get past, settled into this game. 
Tremendous catch. Big exactly time. the kind of play they needed to spark. Hawkins picks his way. Sutter steps, has a first down, and dives to the 45. Watch this zone play. Watch them get the linebackers and the defensive line on skates going this way. Everybody from Notre Dame is going this way, and they're going to try to find a crease right there. Puts his foot in the ground, is able to cut back and get some good yards. He's a quick guy, obviously, at 182, but also tough. And he runs with a chip on his shoulder, as a lot of undersized backs do. That trips into the boundary here. Up at the top. Another run to Hawkins. And unable to really get those blocks on the edge. And there's no game. Here's the Irish defense. And you look at guys like Julian Aquora and Khaled Kareem, <laughs> Dalen Hayes. That's get, formidable. Yeah, they, they've got some great players in depth up front. The real qu question is a linebacker. They lose Drew Tranquil and Tavon Coney, two leaders. And back end has some experience. Elliot Gilman, both those guys at safety. And Troy Pride takes over for Julian Love into the boundary to be their top corner. Pass, flushed, escapes. He shows his quickness and his turn to run for a first down to the Notre Dame 43. May have to do a lot of that this year. He does a really good job of showing you. You got to remember it's 6'4, 240. Scott Satterfield prefers a mobile and athletic quarterback to run this system. Now he wants to run the ball to set up play action. That was my first question is can pass be that kind of guy? I said, oh yeah, much better athlete than people realize. Trying to attract the Irish eyes with Tutsu Atwell in motion. Drew White and Wusu knocking Hawkins down for a short loss. We talked about the battle of the line of scrimmage on the other side favoring Notre Dame on paper You would think of course that that does on this side of the ball as well with some of the gifted players that they have That's why Louisville's got to do a good job of trying to tire them out trying to run sideline to sideline and some quick passes Play action and immediately passes flushed retreating and just heaves it to the bench no receiver in the area as Owusu Koromoa came after him, see if they huddle up. Yeah, the big question is, did he get outside of the tackle box? And I think the answer is yes. And then it's a matter of, did it get across the line of scrimmage? You can see where the, the tackle box would be right about, right about there. Can he get to the hash? I think he got outside of the tackle box and is clean. Benefit the doubt given. He had no intention of trying to complete that. The play was in trouble from the start. And speaking of being in trouble from the start against this this defensive line, this is what you want to avoid is third and long. Go, oh, they caught him there. Okora. That's a great matchup. Okora against Beckton, number 73. Both those guys will be playing on Sundays. And this is those matchups on the edge where you can make some money. You can get on Mel Kuyper's Outside. highlight Outside. tape. Defense. Defense, number 42. Five yard penalty. Still. Now, that previous play, what we didn't mention is Owusu getting in. Out. They, the coaches warned us because we haven't seen a lot of him. They said, watch six, how twitchy and athletic he is. But clearly, Okwara up at the top trying to get a quick jump and gives Louisville a much better chance now. A little bit more manageable on third down. He needs seven. Option look. Pass escapes. Shows his strength as a runner. Finally knocked out inside the 30, but he's twice moved the sticks with his feet. Boy, this is a good job of making a quick decision. Reads the defender. Hayes on the outside goes outside. Now he just has to avoid the penetration from Kareem. And again, go back to his athletic ability. Allowed him to get around 53. And once he did that, because Hayes went quickly to the pitch man, there's nobody in the alley. And he has the speed to pick up the first down there on third and seven. Yeah, third down runs of 11 and now 13 yards. Now they flip it in the flat. And the catch is made on the edge. It's Marshawn Ford and ex halfback. They'll, they'll move him around as kind of an H back. Pretty good blocker, too. This gives you an idea what Satterfield wants to do with this offense. He, he is trying to read the outside man. Go ahead and with pass and what he tries to do. Watch the outside man commit down. He's reading him. And because the corner pride came down to the quarterback, it's just an option. Just pitches it out and gives it. If he stays wide, he runs the football. Hawkins. Picks his way to the corner, sprinting inside the 10 of the Cardinals are marching first and goal. Boy, they are going back into the boundary with some success. We talked about the mismatch maybe up front, but they're running zone plays, not man-to-man -man blocking or gap scheme. They're just getting those big, talented defensive linemen who slanted into the boundary and just pushing them and relying on the back's vision and experience and explosiveness to find a crease and hit it. Yards in chunks, 15 there. Sets him up at the six. 
Hawkins picks his way. He will run into a wall of white jerseys. Now the question is, this has been such an incredible opening drive for Louisville. Can you close the deal? You get inside this 10-yard line against Notre Dame, and that offense, they cannot afford to settle for field goals on a drive like this. They need touchdowns. Satterfield calls the plays. He's done so for 17 seasons. A big part of the Appalachian State success was this guy calling plays, and we'll talk about the the shocker in the big house that he was a part of. Yeah. I think you got to roll pass out. You cannot continue to work up the middle. There you go. Pass is rolling. And he'll roll untouched Touch for the end zone. zone. And Louisville answers. How's that for an answer? 12 plays, 82 yards, just when the crowd was thinking, oh no, here we go again. Right, showing a little life, fighting back. Something we definitely didn't see from Louisville in the second half of the 2018 season. Creaky, fourth year kicker, very reliable, knocks it through. Chris, it's the same play they ran earlier, this time it's against man to man. So again, a quarterback's reading the defense. He's going to get a block right here, and then you're going to have a you're going to have the quarterback running to the edge. He sees man to man and read it with him. What are you going to do? You're going to throw it? No. Everybody clears out. There's the alley. Take off and go. Touchdown for the Cardinals. A great one-headed catch by Dawkins set the table early in the drive, and then the Cardinals on the ground get even at seven midway first quarter. ESPN College Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Wingstop. Order now at wingstop.com, where flavor gets its wings. Nearby Churchill Downs, Notre Dame is four horsemen recreated. Those guys are a little overweight for jockeys, but uh, fans get a chance to take some pictures, and the oh, most famous racetrack anywhere is just a short drive away from this football stadium. It's beautiful. Get you excited about the sure first does. week in May already. Oh man, I can't wait. Love it. Every year. Well, the local long shots have answered. They had four plays in that touchdown drive. Runs of longer than 10 yards. Pass taking it in. Freaky's kick is short and returnable. Moving ahead is Williams and he's hit hard. That's a pumped up coverage team for Louisville. Book and the offense moved effortlessly for a touchdown of the first possession. Now go back to work. Chris, watch this effort here. And again, it's, it's a small thing. To me, it's not when you're trying to change a culture. Watch the man who makes the tackle right there. Blows up the block and then blows up the ball carrier or the, the returner. That is a great job. And he'll be celebrating right there. Blocks, <laughs> takes on the block and then makes the tackle. That is an example of what the coach Satterfield and his staff are trying to use as examples to get this team to realize what they're capable of doing. Tabarius Peterson, backup defensive lineman, covering the kick with speed down there. Now they bring a blitz off the blind side, but Book has his pass tipped at the line and falls to the turf. Brian Brown is the fourth defensive coordinator here. In the last four years, he came from Appalachian State with Satterfield. He had good defenses there, by the way. He sure did. Undersized, but very fast. He's exact, Chris, you're exactly right. Up front, looked like the nose guard who was slanting that time. Looked like Goldwire might have gotten his 90, might have gotten his hand up there to knock that down. That's one way to try to slow down an accurate passer. Book lofts it far side and over the head of Chase Claypool. It's hard to do that at 6-5, covered by Chandler Jones. It's third down. Yeah, but if you saw, Ian Book made that throw. He tried to go high to Chase to, to Claypool, who has great length and great catch radius, but he got pressure. They are coming after him. The defensive coordinator, Brian Brown, who you get a look at right there, dialed it up, and as soon as he released the ball, he felt pressure down low at his knees. I think it affected the accuracy. Crowd is alive and on their feet. I don't think this stadium has been like this since Lamar Jackson played here.
Cardinals rush three, drop eight. Book escapes and dives this time. Does not have first down yardage. He's short of the 30. So mixing the coverages in that series. Yeah, they've been showing a lot of pressure. The first two on this series was was in his face, coming after him, and gives you an idea what Brian Brown likes to do. He likes to try to confuse quarterbacks. You're thinking pressure. They showed it and they dropped. And I think Ian Book caught off a little bit off guard, and they didn't have an opportunity to convert, and he had to try to pick it up with his feet. Jay Bramlett is a freshman from Tuscaloosa, kicking a question mark, punting and place kicking for the Irish. A little shaky in the spring, and the first time for Bramlett. He gets a pretty good boot away. And fair catch made at the 25-yard line by Jay Burns, is one of the best in the country returning punts. So the Cardinals second possession coming up time seven. You know how rare it was for the Louisville defense to force a three and out Hit three what last four games combined? last four games last year and already won this year pass <laughs> retreats and fires into the bench penetration quickly by the pass rush Maria. Well, Chris, we've already seen Jawan pass with one touchdown rush. And I talked to Quincy Avery, who's been his quarterback's coach since high school. And he said the biggest difference this coaching staff has made is it's refreshed him. He has a new confidence. And quarterback's coach Frank Pond said when he looked at Jawan pass in the locker room, it's the first time in his eyes he felt like he was ready to go out and play football. And he's smiling on the sidelines, talking to his teammates. His entire demeanor has changed from a season ago, I'm told. I also think not running Lamar Jackson's offense helps. You know, yeah. that, that's a big shadow to be the next guy. The handoff and Hawkins is swallowed up. Lamar Jackson, by the way, extremely supportive as pass struggled last year. Benched against Indiana State and Western Kentucky. And by the end of the year, he was as low as you can get in terms of quarterback confidence. That's what they had to try to rebuild when Satterfield came in. Positive start, but now it's another I, third I, I, long. I thought it was here. interesting for a guy that was so down, they put him intentionally on some of the leadership groups that they really emphasized to try to pull some of that leadership and confidence out of him. Irish are very eager and again they've come across the line. Offside. Offside. Defense. Defense. Number 53. Five yard penalty. Same thing as last third time. It's third and long. Now you go to third and five and you give pass a much better chance. Changes the play call too. Some is the other end. Khalid Kareem. Kind of mistakes that Kelly saw all these other teams make and was hoping his team would avoid in their opening night. Just a mental error again on that Irish defensive front. Veteran group. Remember, they've been working the edge with that option, that read look for pass where he can run it or throw it, depending on how the defense responds. Irish are pressing on the receivers. That's a wrinkle this year. Option look again. And making a cut is Hawkins in the clear. Foot race. Jamie and Hawkins finally knocked down inside the Notre Dame 30. It's a great call on third down going to get man to man you're pitching off of this man right here once he makes this pitch to Hawkins look at the outside the corner running with the receiver you don't have to worry about him it's just making that alley player the safety miss which is exactly what Hawkins does outstanding call knowing what to expect and anticipating it by Scott Satterfield to give pass a chance there on third and five Hawkins speed just ran right through the tackle 44 yard gain to to Atwell and around the blazer maybe the best football player on the team at 153 pounds out of Miami that's saying something well, this he, level I mean he gets the ball yeah, he's small but I'll tell you what if he's in space you you better leverage the football because that's exactly what uh, coach Satterfield wants to do is whether it's a jet sweep or it's a quick throw they're just trying to create opportunities for him to be able to use his wiggle to get around people you see how sudden he is I mean his blink of an eye look at it second and one High school quarterback Miami Northwestern didn't get him nearly enough touches last year just 24 receptions pass play action lofty clears him and well bobbled it incomplete could have caught it clean for six but he couldn't control the football and was over the end line by the time he had it 
Oh, this, this could not have been executed any better by pass. In rhythm, perfect throw over the defensive player, and he's just unable to hold on to it. And that's just, it's just, you know, one of those things. And you, you throw that 10 times, he catches it 9 out of 10, just took his eye off the ball just for a second. Awusu, who's a big outside linebacker, kind of a hybrid guy, well, maybe, who knows, maybe he was, that's definitely worth another look. Did he, after he missed it, maybe he gets that foot back down. But where does he have control? He gets his hand right. back on it. There. On it. A, there. Oh, Whoa. it's still down. I think the toe is down. You got to look at that. They showed the replay. Bob Welch of this ACC crew will take a look at it. If he had control, it was just at the last possible split second. But it's maybe a touch after all. Bobbled there. Still has some yeah, control to here and right there. Is he squeezing the ball? Oh, boy. Is the toe down? Well, that. I want to let Dave Kataya Let's come in. Dave Kataya, busy weekend, a rules well, you, expert in the booth. What are they looking at? That's why they Dave? pay you the big bucks, Dave. What do you think of this one? Okay, the rule is you've got to possess and control the ball with that foot down. Right there, you see that back foot down. Now, let's see what happens with the ball. Ooh. That ball is still, it's so close. I don't think they're going to be able to overturn this. Yeah, the, the, the left hand, the ball moved back to the right hand right there. But he's still, boy, it's it's a blink of an eye. It's a blink of an eye. In I, real time, this is almost impossible to call. Yeah, you can't call that. I just uh, I just don't think they have enough to reverse it, in my opinion. It's close. We'll see what they say. Yeah. Indisputable video evidence that he had control when the toe was down. That's what they're looking at. I, I just want to go back and, and brag on passes throw. I mean, that, that was beautiful for a guy that we keep talking about that was he had lost his confidence and what you know he gets this new offense they're trying to make him more of a leader watch how he keeps the safety in the middle instead of working over towards the receivers he's got to be able to keep the safety right there and then get the ball throw it on a line right over the defender of Wusu is exactly After what he review, did the ruling on the field stands there you go so not yeah. confirmed but stands, it'll be third and one. And I think what Dave said is exactly right. I mean, it's it, it was a blink of an eye. It, and because the ball moved from his left hand back to his right, even though he had his toe down, I just don't know if for even the replay booth to slow it down frame by frame, if you could be able to say that he definitely had possession as he had a toe down. You can't, it has to be in real time. Right. You can't slow it down frame by frame. Uh, okay, good. Good stuff, Dave. Atwell, unfortunate for him because he's their sure-handed guy, and that yeah. was an opportunity to make a monster play. Drive alive still, though, with third and one. It's Atwell in motion. They feed. Oh, pass keeps it. It takes off. And will score for a second time untouched. Beaten down, physically abused by the pass rush, as low as you can get, Kirk. What a start for this season opener. Yeah, but, but also a great, not just a great start by pass and these two possessions, but a really good job of getting some help from his playmakers. And how about the offensive line in this new system against a very talented Notre Dame defensive line? So the play, everything's working. The play calling, uh, the quarterback play, the skill, the offensive line. If you're a Louisville fan, going to be fired up. Two possessions, two touchdowns. You know, right now you have a confused Notre Dame defense. Motion on third and one. This defensive back goes with him. And they're slanting and angling in here, trying to take away a short run maybe by the quarterback. But watch what happens to the safety when he sees the, the, the tight end going out. He's kind of in no man's land. Do I take the, do I go out to the tight end? Meanwhile, he leaves the middle of the field open. They're playing a ton of man-to-man. -to -man. The linebackers right now are lost, and the safeties as well. They don't know if it's coming or going because of the mobile athletic ability of that quarterback in the quarterback run game. 75-yard drive capped off by a 17-yard run, the second tonight for pass. And the lefty creek, he drives another fair catch made. For the Goodyear blip. This is the setting for one of the Megacast presentations. Marty Smith and Ryan McGee live from on board the Wingfoot One with the Blimpcast. You can check it out on the ESPN app. A lot more chilled there than the folks in the stadium are right now. They are revved up. I think they're stunned. 
pleasantly stunned to see the offense two long touchdown drives just running through this vaunted Notre Dame defense. And the Irish went three and out last time they had the football. Well, this is where you're, you're very lucky to have a, a quarterback like Ian Book because this is a hostile environment all of a sudden and he's got to try to go out and settle this offense down. Jones has a crease. He shows his running strength for eight yards on first down. Rajay Burns tackled him. Remember that opening drive for Notre Dame was six plays five runs and they just went right down the field with the exception of one pass for some good yards but they just controlled the line of scrimmage and pretty much did whatever they wanted to do. Now it's Jones again makes a cut we'll have a first down still spinning and twisting across the 40 yard line. Yeah, they, they, you could have driven a truck or a bus through that hole. I mean, they are opening up dominating the line of scrimmage and there's no reason for Notre Dame to feel early in a game like this as they know with Brian Kelly and Chip Long and Ian Book. You know, just keep keep doing what they do. First down play action. Book took a peek downfield. Now he's trying to buy some time and will just fire it into the bench. Pressure by Dorian Etheridge, the smart leader of that Louisville defense. You, know, you run the ball. That's, that's that's what Brian Kelly wants to do with Chip Long. Run the ball, run the ball, and then set up their play action game. But. After two really good runs you'd think you get the safeties out of position but they were anticipating a play action look and he had nobody open downfield all he could do is throw it away. Book who set the Notre Dame record 68.2 completion last year just one of four right now. On second down it's Jones hurtling some traffic and makes his own crease and barrels down inside the 45 as the ground game continues to churn away Yeah, this power game you're going to follow Tommy Kramer Follow well, Tommy Kramer the right guard he's going to come around and just kind of lead the way when you have big linemen that can move around and, and just bury defenders no forget about setting the edge he's just going to get underneath of that edge and have a lot of room to run we're running some fresh guys on the defensive front here Smith is the back book looking to throw and gets it out short Lawrence keys one of the young playmakers that Brian Kelly is eager to see in action for the first time tonight. Yeah we keep talking about some of the new playmakers with Miles Boyking moving on and commit the big tight end who's got to replace Mac and so you're looking at guys like keys we know about Fink and we know about Claypool but. I think Notre Dame fans are anxious to see what 13 can do with that great speed. Komet and Michael Young both out with collarbone fractures. On second down, Book is pressured. He'll be sacked off the edge. Burns, the former Ohio State Buckeye, came on the blitz. I'm a little bit surprised with Book. He locked in on Claypool to his left. He's looking here. But he should have been able to work back to his right. Watch him look initially to the left, but look at the right, the tight end, the receivers. Nobody even lined up opposite of Keys in the slot. Just a, just a, a kind of a, so he was so intent on getting the ball into the boundary in a one on one matchup that he forgot to look over to his right where he had open receivers even before the snap. You could see it. Third and 13. Got a hurry. Did he get it off in time? No. Timeout. He had to take a timeout. Play clock was winding down. Visitors' offenses did not often have to deal with crowd noise last year, to say the least. It's a defense, Kirk, that had 11 sacks all of last year. That was a rare thing, what we just saw. And you wonder you know, if you're if you're calling plays, Chip Long and Brian Kelly combining, why are you going away from the running game at all? They haven't come close. To stopping the running game. It was a first down throw there that kind of broke the rhythm a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think they have 10 carries, 93 yards. You're averaging nine yards a carry running the football. Um, but as soon as they tried to mix in play action, it seems like they got behind the sticks and, and, and they're playing a little bit of catch up on, on this series. But now they're third and long. You're Louisville. You got to keep trying to mix the looks up. You know, they've been blitzing. Looks like rushing three and dropping eight now. Trying to keep all eyes on the football in case there's a short throw. They don't want to give any yards up after the catch. There's only three guys within 12 yards of the line of scrimmage. Handoff inside, and there's a busted tackle. But Tony Jones is going down the sidelines, and they will be shoved out at the 10. They may not need to throw the football tonight. <laughs> well, they had three down, and they were showing that they're dropping eight. 
I mean, they were way back. Watch the linemen. They come off the ball. They have nobody to block. I mean, it wasn't third and 20. It was third and 13. And, and the linemen are 10, 15 yards downfield before they got to pick anybody up. Hit immediately in the backfield. It was good penetration there by G.G. Robinson, that big nose tackle out of Georgia. I couldn't tell if Ian Book wanted to pull that ball and try to get around the edge. They'll, they'll, you know, we talk about Louisville's option game, but Notre Dame also likes to do that with Ian Book, especially when they get down here. He is a run threat with his legs. Final minute of the first quarter. Jones again turns the corner and barrels in, and the Irish answer right back with their ground game. Blocks yeah. from Kramer and Hainsey on the right side. I think, Brian, I think we just heard Brian Kelly on the headset with, with Chip Long. Um, we are running the rest of the game until they stop it. Yeah. <laughs> don't we? Let's run the football. You, you like to play, but don't switch a winning hand. Oh, 10 yards of carry. Prove they can yeah. stop you. 10 yards of carry. Keep running it. Tommy Kramer that time with a really nice block. Jones already with 87 yards and his seven carries. And Dorr ties the game. We've had four long touchdown drives, two by each team, all of them really using the ground game. Watch the right side of the offensive line. I think Kramer this time gets involved in, in coming out to help and then helps kind of seal the edge as Hainsey makes a block to the outside. Watch the right guard. He's having a heck of a drive here. He gets outside, then he climbs up, just kind of sets that edge there to allow the back Jones to cut back into the middle. You don't always have to get outside. Sometimes you get inside there. It's a good job of the linemen turning their backs to the hole, and there's just nobody there at the second level to be able to take on Jones. That quiets the delirious crowd here, although Kelly going to have a lot of concerns about defense. What we've seen in this first quarter with Louisville gaining 120 rushing yards, just moving the ball with this New look offense that Satterfield has been using so successfully at Appalachian State for a long time. Yeah, it, you know, it requires the quarterback to make great throws, but it really starts with his ability to run the ball and, and make quick decisions, which pass in a few, few drives has done exactly what Coach Satterfield would hope he would be able to do. He looks great. Doors boot will push Hassan Hall to the end zone, and with a moment's hesitation, he'll bring it out. And he is hammered across the 25 yard line. A good special teams tackle there by Owusu. Saturday, college football doubleheader on ABC and the ESPN have two really good ones. Number one, Clemson hosting Texas A&M, Dabo and Jimbo in Death Valley at 3.30 Eastern. And then LSU, they get on Texas, a top 10 matchup in Austin. Longhorns with some serious running back injury concerns yeah, will be a lot on Sam Ellinger's plate and Sam not only throwing but obviously running and how about Joe Burrow looked outstanding and he comes in with a lot of confidence thinking he had five touchdown passes in the opening game got to hurry here and they will have to spend a time out the play clock was at two We've seen a lot of that early in the season potential delay of games timeouts taken off a stoppage of play week one my friend I get it. <laughs> hey, listen, this team has executed pretty well in week one. No penalties yet for Louisville. Discipline, attention to detail, accountability, all the words that new coaches throw around when they inherit a losing situation. And it's, it's been a, a promising start for them. They got work to do on the defensive side. That's obvious. The pass looks like a different quarterback. He sure does. He seems to really pick this offense up and you know, I, I, I knew he could throw the ball. I just I wondered how he would fit in running the football and um, obviously showing us and the coaches a lot throughout the, the summer. He's doing a great job here in these first uh, these first couple series. He's going to roll out. He's got some space, but he flips it short and it's dropped. Tried to get a crossing route there. And it's uh, incomplete. You know, Malik Cunningham was their leading Rusher last year, the backup quarterback who's out injured, hurt himself in camp, and he's another electric type ball carrier from the quarterback position. 
Absolutely. Who could play a role in this offense. He, he could as the season goes on. I think tonight he might be more of a, an emergency role. I think Notre Dame trying to make some adjustments with, with Clark Lee. They're moving in different personnel at linebacker. Right now Shane Simon is in the game along with Drew White at linebacker. See if they continue to play a ton of man-to-man -man, the way they have these first two possessions where they drop the zone. Quarterback keeper again. Gets a block from Atwell and an excellent tackle on the edge made by Sean Crawford. Who sat out with an Achilles injury last year, part of a very good group of Irish safeties. Well, they're deep at safety, and they Crawford has an ability where you can play corner, you can play nickel, you can play safety, and that time came up in space and made a play that we've not seen tonight yet from that Notre Dame secondary. Offense is going up and down the field. 14 apiece at the end of one. It'll be third and long to begin the second quarter. Set for quarter two, ESPN College Football Primetime is done by Capital One. These teams combining for 260 rushing yards in the first quarter. Louisville was a disaster in third down last year, but made all three conversions so far tonight. They need eight. Well, if I'm past, I'm looking back into the boundary in the slot, looking for Dawkins right here. He's looking instead to the flat and inaccurate pass in front of JV and Hawkins. So, yeah, they, they, you know, they showed blitz, fell out of it, and Lamb was able to get out there. Even if they completed that, that play didn't have much of a chance at all. So, Mason King, fourth year punter, is out there. And you're going to see Chris Fink, one of the Irish. Got a number of return options. They send out the reliable grad from Dayton. King very often boot him high, forces a lot of fair catches. He's a high boot, but Fink is going to give it a go. And he'll be swarmed under right there. Excellent coverage as the gunner flies down and makes the play. Russ Yeast. Well, that's how you get down and make a play. Fink has a chance. If you give him room, he can get around you. But Yeast, who starts, we mentioned he was a corner last year, moved to safety, very comfortable making a tackle. We'd love to see when starters get involved in special teams. And he just outworked the, the blocker to try to get around him and made the play. And that 54, 52-yard yeah. punt. Lost a couple on the return. Now, Notre Dame's defense has made some adjustments. They were able to get off the field. Let's see if Louisville can do a better job of defending the physicality in the run game. It's a first down throw and a drop in the flat. Karen Williams came out of the backfield and couldn't hang on. So when they've tried to throw on first down, it hasn't been successful. Yeah, yeah, I think he just young back who just got his eyes upfield trying to see where he might want to go before he able to hold on to the ball. So he goes out. Smith comes in. And Smith has it and he hammers straight ahead. I think the forward pass is he put that on the shelf for a while. I mean, they're gaining 10, 12 yards I, I, a carry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they're, they're going to continue to run, and eventually what they're going to try to do is get Louisville to overcommit. Then they can look for the big play downfield. But for now, they're just looking to use these linemen. That time they had the right guard and the right tackle pull around, and they're such big bodies. Remember, this is an undersized front from Louisville, and these backs are hiding behind the, those big shoulders of those linemen. Well, keeps it, and he'll gallop to the edge for about four. That's just to remind them 12 is going to pull it once in a while. It's like old Andrew Luck at Stanford when he every once in a while would just do enough to remind you that he can keep it and pull it and uh, pick up 10 or 15 yards. Books the same way it's to keep the edge of the defense off of collapsing down on the backs. He gained almost 400 rushing yards last year before you factor in the sacks and scored four touchdowns. Second and seven. Books straight back, fires sidelines, and the catch is made by McKinley, and he's knocked out on the far sidelines. Good size, 6'2", 220. They're sitting back. Louisville just sitting back, fearful of these, these receivers potentially going by them. Actually lost his footing there and made it pretty easy. Pretty easy for Ian Book, kind of pitch and catch when you're dropping back at eight yards and giving them those underneath throws. Louisville just feels like they're trying to keep the ball in front of them, don't they? And Buck again. 
Scrambling around, he'll be sacked for a loss of four on first down. Second sack tonight. Well, that time they showed blitz and actually brought the linebacker Etheridge 17 comes up the middle. You can see the surge from the middle of that offensive line. That's what forced Book to have to get outside. It's one thing to get pressure on the edges. Quarterback can step up, climb in the pocket. When that pressure comes up the middle, Book's trying to get out. Louisville does a nice job that time, mixing it up. Second and 14, a play action throw across the middle and going back is Claypool. Nice hands catch, and it's a first down inside the Louisville 45. Yeah, I mean, we keep talking about Claypool with his catch radius 6'5. What he can do with Boykin moving on, Miles Boykin moving on, he becomes that go to receiver into the boundary. He's got to win one on one for them and be able to go up and make plays. That time goes in on a slant and makes a nice catch, nice adjustment to the ball behind him. Smith running left. Yeah, he had a tremendous camp. His Claypool really could not be contained by the Irish defense, and that's why there's such optimism that he's going to have a monster senior season. Had 50 catches last year. Yeah, they really leaned on him, knowing that, that you know, they, they've lost some people, and it's time for him to take that next step. Really grew up a basketball player growing up in Canada. That was his, that was his sport, still learning the game. And Chip Long said, as you said, Chris, had a great camp and starting to kind of pick up some of the nuances of the position. And rotate backs and Sebo Flemister is now to the left of Book. Goes out in the flat. Book fires short. And just sitting down on the route and making a short catch is Claypool. Big body, easy to box out a guy. Sure. You know, big. Yeah, it's great. Quarterbacks love throwing to hoop players, said, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, quarterbacks love throwing to big bodies like that because it, it, it's for, you know, they, they can forgive you with that catch radius if you throw it like the one he threw behind him. Claypool adjusted to it, but they were not able to pick up the first down, so it sets up to third and two here. Jones is back in the game. Shift two tight ends to the right side, and they'll run it that way. But Jones is going to be stacked up, fighting, but he will not get there. The Cardinals swarming for a loss. Nick Okeke got there first. How about Brian Brown's defense making a stand? We didn't Brian, see much yeah. of that last year. Brian here. Brown fired up. He wants his linebackers to play downhill. Well, obviously, on third and two, you're going to do that. But every once in a while, this undersized Louisville defense is able to shoot a gap and get a good, a good pu a push, and the linebackers blitzing helped them there. Kelly going for it. They need four and a half yards. Got to get inside the Louisville 35 on fourth down. Jones motioning in. Three-man rush. Book has time. Flips it underneath. Catch made. No first down. Low throw. Fink got it, but didn't go far enough. And Louisville takes over. Chris, that's how important throwing a, an accurate ball is. Throws this ball low. Fink goes down to make the catch. If he throws it where he can make a play on it and do something after the catch, it's a first down. Fourth and four, they go with a mesh route, meaning crossers. Look at look at Book, off balance, kind of short arms it, maybe feeling the pressure on fourth down. An accurate throw there, hits him in the chest. He turns and picks up another three or four yards and picks up a first down. That's how important accuracy is for quarterbacks. Irish had third and two and somehow could not move the stick. So Louisville takes over at the 36. The way they've been running the ball, think of that. Pass straight back, pressured, and delivers a looping throw that's over the head of Tutu Atwell. They got a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but just enough pressure to make an off-target throw. See, I, I think when they had their success, they were working the edges of the Notre Dame defense. They, they were moving pass around, giving him some options to run and to throw. If I'm Coach Satterfield, I get back into that groove, find that rhythm of giving past the, the edge of running where he's been dynamic, or if Notre Dame takes him away, you have the option to throw the ball. Second and ten. Hassan Hall breaks the tackle, and he busts it into Notre Dame territory. The Louisville ground game has been on fire. Well, here's a superstar freshman, Hamilton, right here playing free safety, coming in, trying to make a play. But look how quickly Hawkins hits that hole, goes right by him with speed, or Hall, rather, goes right by him with that speed. 
but 14, the true freshman, Hamilton, was there. I think he underestimated how quickly he was going to run downhill. Now, cutback run. You can't come out of a camp into your true freshman year with more hype than Kyle Hamilton did. Sure did. A couple of the scrimmages. I think one of them, he had three interceptions, and there was a big buzz about him after that. Of course, anytime you get on campus, you have a couple, three interceptions. And next time, I think he had two interceptions, and everybody started to talk about, how about this freshman, Kyle Hamilton? So he's on the field, game one, trying to make plays. Rare athlete, 6'4", very fluid, very fast. Should have a good career, but bound to be a transition from high school to college ball, no matter how good you were at that level. Second and seven. Pass from the pocket. Looks back and has a man. And now closing to break up the play nicely is. is Hamilton. Yep. Yeah, they, they talk about his range and his instincts. And, and how many times do you see freshmen, by the way, that play safety, any safety at any age, playing that's 6'4"? But he, he has a, does a good job of keeping his eyes on the ball, making, looking around. Look at his head's on a swivel, sees Fitzpatrick leak out, and he shows you the range to be able to make the play on that. Again, most safeties against spreads that they see, most coaches have gone to that undersized, quicker safety that's really more of a corner at six feet, about 190 pounds. He's 6'4 out there showing range. Pass over his last five, now in third and seven, delivers incomplete again, right in the traffic. They're trying to find Atwell, but Tariq Bracey broke it up, and it's fourth down. And, and that's just great coaching by Clark Lee. Bracey knowing that it's third down, and he's, he knows to anticipate a throw at about six, seven, eight yards, so he's up tight to be there to be able to knock that ball away. They know the ball with the pass rush has to come quickly. In fact, Brian Kelly told us, hey, we're going to tighten up coverage, not just this game, all year. Because of our pass rush, we know people want to get the ball out faster, so we're going to play more press than we ever have because of people having respect for the pass rush and getting the ball out quickly. Especially at early downs. He, he calls them free access throws, yeah. right? They want to give yep. that easy five, six yards to the quarterback. Mason King drops the point and kicks it very high, and Fink will make a fair catch at the 15-yard line. 8.54, surprisingly, we're tied in Louisville. ESPN College Football, brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. They're proud of the new facility here. The end zone to the left of us, and they make the walk. The locker room got a lot of red mood lighting. Make that turn and head down the fans and get out there. Maria, what's the mood in the Notre Dame sideline? I got to tell you, Chris, it's very frustrated down here. And the offense, Jafar Armstrong, running back, was talking to his team about just tightening up and being a little bit more disciplined. I also saw Cole Komet. Remember, he's the tight end that's out with the collarbone injury. He's going back and forth between offensive line, wide receivers, trying to talk through some of those frustrations and build some more confidence here in this series. They should feel confident in the running game. They've had no problem creating creases with the run. And Book instead going to throw it short. Claypool bouncing off people. It's a, about an eight yard gain. Notre Dame's giving them a little bit of their own medicine with a run pass option. Good read there. Just commit. He's their starting tight end out tonight, but still involved, as Maria just said, trying to fire the troops up. Really need him back for the Georgia game. They expect to have him back for that huge road game. Book pulls it, takes a pop. Loses the football. Ball pops in the air and Smith recovers the fumble for Notre Dame. A hard hit right along the sideline, but the Irish keep the football. It looked like Connie Pass, I think, came up and made the hit. 30. Comes up, puts his helmet right on the ball. The book might go down and get out of bounds. Boom. Ball gets hit. The, the helmet on the ball knocks it straight up. Great hit. Experienced veteran by Pass, the senior, does a nice job. Stacked up is Smith, third and short after the fumble recovery, and the Louisville defense rises up again. And basically in a, a tight, almost like a goal line short yardage defense pass, who made the play in the previous play, I think actually got the penetration again. He goes between the right guard and the center and makes Smith have to get off, and off his course and cut back to the left. So pass 30. Got penetration there on third down and short. Second time in a row, Louisville's to be able to come up with a big play. It's incredible. Irish feeling great about the running game, but back-to-back -back stout plays and 
stout series by this Louisville defense. And there's Bramblett, and they were concerned about this. It's a shank. Not going to work out that badly because it rolls sideways and out of bounds. And there is a flag on the field. Ball spotted at the Louisville 36, and now we'll check the flag. Little bit shaky in the spring game. Bramblett was the freshman replacing Tyler Newsom, who's a terrific punter. The kicker door replacing Justin Yoon, who's the all time leading scorer at Notre Dame. During the kick, holding, receiving team, number 95, 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Timeout. Kick did work out bad. Ended up being a 41 yarder. Now they'll back it up more for the hold. But as again, big third down stop by Louisville. Pass is a safety up as a linebacker is able to shoot through the right side there between the center and the guard. That affects Smith to have to cut back, and there's the rest of that Louisville defense. Cardinals in game one of the Scott Satterfield era hanging right with the ninth ranked team. After forcing the punt, they take over at the 26. And Tutu Atwell around the edge. The Blazer from Miami in space was just stopped at the 40. Saved a monster gain there, Jalen Elliott. We, we were kind of talking in the previous series what, what you might see them doing. I keep saying, get to the perimeter. Get the ball on the edge. Get your speed in space and force the Notre Dame secondary in the edge of this defense to have to make tackles. And if they do it for four quarters, so be it. But that is a great thing for them to go back to, whether it's pass on the edge or getting Tutu Atwell out there on the outside or quick passes on the edge. Comes in motion this side. Eyes go to him. A couple of flags down as Hawkins is dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's a chop block on Louisville. And spotted from two different angles by this ACC crew. The center locked up with a nose guard and then left guard submarined him. It's T.J. McCoy, number 59. Personal foul, illegal chop block, offense, number 55 and 59. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's a kind of major penalty that this offense is going to have a hard time recovering from. Uh, there it is. Yep. They cut down Hinnish. And, and right after a big play, you, this offense is predicated upon momentum and, and attacking, and they get a big play, and all of a sudden they're about to start to create some tempo, and boom, you go back 15 yards. Few offenses are built for first and 25. No, that's true, but this, this offense <laughs> with a new coaching staff and a team that just was awful last year. You know, you, anytime you get a first down, it's you want tempo, you want to attack, and it really kills that momentum. Pass took a look over the middle and has nowhere to go, and is going to be dropped for a short loss there. Drew White, the middle linebacker, stopped him. Great job by Notre Dame, discipline that time. He wanted to go off to his right. He had a nice post, but he was taken away by the safety and a corner double team, and. He didn't have anywhere to go with his check down. Watch the safety back here. He's looking right. He wants to try to throw it in there, but typically you have a check down or you have an answer. That time it was all or nothing, either the post or nothing. And Notre Dame had it leveraged with uh, with two defenders, nowhere to go with the ball. Right about the penalty now, if you're Satterfield, you just hope Juwan Pass doesn't press here. You don't want to make the kind of mistake that would give the Irish the football in good territory. Second and a mile from the pocket, he flips his short. That's White broken up. So tackle for loss, and now the big man covering a little guy in space makes a play. And, and, and Drew White, we keep talking about Drew Tranquil, a veteran leader, Tavon Coney. These guys aren't here. They're trying to find out if Drew White's going to be the guy, physical guy, but can be athletic. We've seen Jack Lamb get his opportunities. Shane Simon has been there. Uh, Bill All's been in there. So they're rotating. Different bodies to see who's going to emerge and become the, the two linebackers that they need this year. On third and 27, Hassan Hall slips a tackle on the backfield and accelerates. He'll get some of the yardage back, but the punt team will come out. Gilman stopped him at the 36. One thing you're never going to accuse Hall of is, is not accelerating through contact. I mean, he, he, he puts his foot down and it goes right into the teeth of the defense. Yeah, runs a 4-3, they say. Got nice hands. Was the 
second leading rusher last year actually the, the top tailback rusher again it was Malik Cunningham the quarterback that led the team. Fink back deep. Mason King gets a high boot away. It's a typical punt for him and Fink makes the fair catch at the 29 yard line. So Ian Book and the offense 436 before halftime as the Irish try to reclaim the lead. You can find out what uh, Marty and McGee are saying from their vantage point. The Goodyear blimp cast on the ESPN app and ESPN three. A nice night for flying. They, don't, they look very chilled. It looks like they're just kind of telling stories. <laughs> See if this offense from Notre Dame can get some rhythm back. Two very successful ground based touchdown drives. Not as successful when they tried to throw the ball on early downs. Jameer Smith is the back. And he's got it running right. And that's one of the better jobs they've done stopping a first down run. They were averaging over nine yards a carry on first down, but Gigi Robinson made the tackle. Chris, watch this play by Gigi Robinson. Nose guard shows you his athletic ability, being able to get off of the block by Jared Patterson. Look at that. That's impressive. That's one of the benefits of being undersized, but having quickness, getting off the of blocks, and being able to chase down a ball carrier. Smith again, stop. GG, the son of Gerald, who played eight years in the NFL, and he needs to cause havoc. They want him to cause havoc this year. It, this defense is built by Brian Brown, who's a defensive coordinator here in Louisville. The defensive line is supposed to not just cause havoc, eat up the offensive line. Don't let them, with movement, don't let them get up to the linebackers. The, off, the defense is built for the linebackers to make all the plays. Irish is one of four on third down, need eight. Book steps up, flushed out. And he'll be tackled. Not able to hang in the pocket, Kirk, and show that presence and make a play. Got run out of there, and Etheridge ran him down. They did a nice job of this time spying him. Etheridge is right here. Watch him clear and then come back. Now he's in position to be able to take Book down. Earlier in this game, we saw Book take off. Nobody was there. They had their backs to him. This time, great adjustment and awareness by the linebacker, Etheridge, on third down to realize Book is a threat and to take him away. This Louisville defense doing an excellent job on third and fourth down tonight. Third three and out by the Irish. That equals the total that Louisville forced in the last four games of the season. Did not see that coming. Burns makes the fair catch and now with 249 before halftime. Cardinals go back to work. Not very good field position. If you just tuned in, you got to give Notre Dame's defense a lot of credit with Clark Lee because the first two series, Louisville went right down the field and was able to make some plays. And since then, that has not been the case. Notre Dame's made adjustments, doing a much better job. I think all in all, they have 10 plays and only 44 yards. So not as much man to man. They don't look as lost. Look at the first two drives. 88 yards touchdown, 75 yards and a touchdown, and then the three punts. Chop block penalty ruined the last drive. Here's a first down run for Hall. And he's going to be knocked down right at the line. Now you're Scott Satterfield, and you're looking at that scoreboard, and it's 14 to 14, 2.30 to go. Notre Dame with a couple timeouts. You're probably thinking, there's nothing wrong with working a little clock here, and trying to trying to just kind of be OK with it to be 14 14 at half. I agree. They'll get the football to begin the second right. half. And I think they'd be thrilled to be even at the break. You see in this right here it's hard count to show Gilman tip his hand. Pass keeps it and he's going to be slammed down Gilman the safety was in the box. The aggressive Hawaiian hard hitter. I mean, if you're going to recognize it, you don't want to go to a play where he's going to actually hit you and make a play. Gilman showed he was blitzing and still makes the play. They knew he was coming. Boy, Gilman's an aggressive player, veteran guy. Last year became really part of the glue of the Notre Dame defense late in that year. One of my favorite guys to talk to and to watch play. Comes from a small town, North Shore of Oahu. I just want him to be healthy the entire season because yeah. he flies Reckless. around Reckless. and yep. he can injure himself. He and Jalen Elliott give him veteran leadership in the back end of the defense. 
Cardinals on third and long pass gave a peek downfield and takes off and he's going to get nowhere near the marker knocked down at the 26 and the Irish said they had the football Aquara comes out of it is it the first turnover well you know young man we were just talking about Gilman was the one that got his hand on the football they're talking about this yeah. not signaled no nope. well watch pass change Oh, they're gonna, oh boy, they're going to take a peek at that. The only chance he has of that not being a fumble is if his right knee was down. And there was a clear and immediate recovery made by Gilman there. Ball is knocked out. Looks well out before he I hits the ground. I think it's out. I think Gilman's right. He changed hands with the ball. There's Gilman's left hand ripping at it. I think that ball's out. And again, this can be fixed by replay because the ball was immediately covered by Notre Dame. Gilman knocked it loose and recovered it. What a heck of a series right on for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> watch, watch pass change hands with the football. You know, and, and he's in traffic. Watch him, watch him on this this draw. He, ball's in the right hand. Now it's in the left hand. He's using that right hand as kind of a weapon. But in in doing that, he's doing it around three different white jerseys. And then the spin move too on top of it. Yeah. Ball is out there. We're going to hone in on the knee. It's another one of those bang bang plays that uh, we had a call of no touchdown, incomplete stand earlier in a similar kind of play. Dave Kataya, what do you uh, what do you see as you check out what Bob Welch in the replay booth is looking at? As you say, other than anything other than the hand or foot, he's down. Now that knee goes down, but to me, it looks like that ball's moving. Before and, that knee goes down and for the fans the ball moving does, do, would that would that be recognized for the replay booth as the ball being loose or a fumble what it's called is independent ball movement take a look at it here and here you go all right see, see that see the ball moving right right now? there all right to me that needs I can't see the other knee, but the other knee looks like it's on a player yeah. so that ball's moving once it's moving if the knees up it's considered a fumble once that ball is moving on its own no control it's already started the process of a fumble okay then it's a fumble. Yeah, it's based Notre on Dame that, ball. the ball is out. Right that's, there, you can see Notre, it. His knee's clearly up. That's Notre Dame's ball. Had and not been a turnover tonight until that one, and that would be monster because as well as Louisville has played, the defense has stepped up here. Notre Dame's would be set up in scoring position here with a minute 17 and one timeout. You know, as Chris said also, it's very important that we have a, a recovery in the immediate and continuing action. Where replay can definitely see who has the ball, and there's no question they can see who has the ball here. Yeah. Heck of a play by Gilman. He knocked it loose and he recovered it. At this point, they're just trying to figure out more than likely where to put the ball, the time on the clock, getting all that, make sure they're set to go before you would think Notre Dame's going to take the possession here about the 26 yard line. Dwayne Haight, experienced ACC referee, communicating with Bob Welch in the booth. Always ACC officials involved with Notre Dame plays the schools in this conference as they do with their long term agreement. Other than this potential turnover pretty even first half look not just the score but pretty much across the board with the stats the numbers. Here comes the verdict. After review the ball came loose prior to the ball carrier touching the ground. It'll be Notre Dame football first down. Please so reset the game clock to one minute, 20 seconds. The one senior from Hawaii, Gilman, seconds. makes the force fumble and then recovers it. Notre Dame, Notre Dame a chance to reclaim the lead ball at the 26-yard line. Now you, you need your veterans to make plays, your leaders to make plays, especially in tight games on the road. Gilman has provided Ian Book with the field position with a minute 20 to go here in his first half. Sudden change, see if Book takes maybe a shot. Or if they continue to try to run the ball with the way their offensive line is played. Big cushion for the slot receiver. Yep. Lay pulls to the right here. One on one matchup. And it is a play action throw. Or is it? Ball closes the football. A scrum as they die for it in the 25. And the Cardinals have reclaimed it. A monster takeaway. Dorian Etheridge. The veteran on the Louisville side makes the recovery. Yeah, and, and he actually ran into the back of Brock Wright, his tight end. That's what caused the fumble. I'm surprised to see Ian Book not take off and go to the left. For some reason he cuts back, he runs right into the tight end, and the ball comes out. It's a scrum, and Louisville flying to the football comes up with it. And I cannot say enough what a difference Louisville 
is from last year to this year. This is a team that flat out quit the last five games of the year last year, gave up over 50 a game. And now their backs against the wall here at the end of the first half in the first game with a new head coach. They come up with a, a stop here. And of course, Ian Book helped him with a fumble. Ryan Brown asked the defense, what do you want your identity to be? And they said mob. He said, what's that? Men over boys. It means we want to grow up, be accountable, me mature. And that this group has shown huge. And now another fumble. Notre Dame's got the ball back. <laughs> back to back to back fumbles. It's Jack Lamb who fell on it. Yeah. You gotta be kidding. The, the, I don't think the snap ever got up to Juwan Pass. You know, he, it was low. And I don't think he ever secured the football. You see Brian Kelly challenging Ian Book, challenging him to get points here after what happened on that last possession when he fumbled. But yeah, I don't think Pass got the ball though. I don't think it got up to him. Let's see. Well, it's low. He could, yeah, he could have been able to hold on to that, but he never, never grasped it. Notre Dame jumps on top of it. You're right. Not often as a quarterback do you get an immediate chance to redeem yourself for a fumble. Book has the chance right here from the 20. They have two timeouts. Jones is the back. Another keeper. Book. Trying to redeem himself right now. How about that? They let the quarterback who just bumped into the tight end and kind of self fumbled carry the ball in the next play. Right. And when we keep telling you that you, you get used to the backs holding it on that zone read look book is athletic enough to to be able to keep it. And you're right. How about Brian Kelly and Chip Long? That's the trust you have in a guy that's been there and done that. Even though he makes a mistake you go right back to him. First and goal Jones trying to bounce it now cut it back into traffic and he'll be knocked down at the six. Still two timeouts. No urgency at this point at all for Ian Book. The Louisville defense has been incredibly impressive but one more test to try to keep the Irish out of the end zone before halftime. Play action. Book looking for the end zone lofts it high and way over the head of the tight end Brock Wright. But well, that was great coverage by Louisville staying back and being in position. They tr he tried to really bait him with a, with handing that showing that that handoff here. Watch the secondary do a good job of showing discipline and staying back. Ray J Burns nice job of staying with a big tight end. Nobody open just throws it over top. Third and goal. Jones in motion. And now a flag. Pre snap, false start. The Irish will be backed up to the 11 now. And the loudest part of this stadium right now. Eichenberg, the left tackle, moved, anticipating the count. Offense, number 74. Five yard penalty. Third down. He's sitting in there waiting, <laughs> waiting, and waiting for that clap. Snap the ball, watch him on the far right. He just twitched just enough. Hard for those tackles on the road. He's fighting to keep his balance, then he knew it. His yeah. offshoot. Yeah. The other undisciplined penalty, though, from a veteran guy. They've been pressuring him on third down, doing a pretty good job the last few possessions, winning it the line of scrimmage with quickness. Jones in motion. Book looked that way. Now he'll keep it. Cut back and score. So a measure of redemption for the Irish quarterback, and they take the lead. They had done such a good job of spying him since the first play of the game and this time they clear out and give book credit. He knew all along that he had that option to take off and run. Nobody accounts for him and he has the speed to make Louisville's defense pay for it. C.J. Avery late in getting there. So the back to back to back fumbles with Notre Dame getting the final takeaway. It's a short 20 yard touchdown drive in four plays. And the Irish are going to go to the halftime locker room up by a touchdown. Huge. Crazy sequence here. First of all, pass. pass takes off. Gilman's going to knock the ball free. This was a fumble awarded correctly after a replay review. And then Book bumps into the tight end. He loses the football. The Cardinals think they've made a huge stand here. They got momentum. And then the fumble right back by pass on the next play. And then watch how the quarterback pump fakes to get the defense over. Pay a big pump fake moves the defense. Nobody there. Nobody spying him. 
speed to the end zone for the touchdown. Look, that feels pretty good because he thought maybe he had cost his team seven points by bumping into the tight end. Love to see Brian Kelly. Love to see coaches anytime the quarterback has has something bad happen or good happen. He comes over and he and he's teaching. You know, he's he's always coaching, even though this is a veteran guy now, still trying to help him with what he's seeing from the Louisville defense. Book got in the weight room, added some muscle in the offseason to be a more physical runner. Well, he's been a pretty quick guy. It's a short boot from Dorr. And it's going to bounce, and it's got to be covered right there. A little urgency as the Cardinals finally do fall on the ball at the 16 with 17 seconds to go. So we got Marty and McGee in the blimp. We also got the Xfinity Skycam providing alternative angle coverage on the ESPN app. We'll still get our commentary on there, but you got lots of options. So now, given all this stuff, Kirk, I'd be a little surprised if yeah. they didn't play it really safe here Just in the a, final play. Take a knee, call it a day, call it a half. But still a deflating way yeah. after a very for, buoyant, for Louisville. enthusiastic start for Louisville. A deflating yeah. way to head to the locker room. After creating the takeaway, they give it right back. And Book gives the Irish the lead. Hall. Creates a little burst, and he's got a shot here. He did get first down yardage, so... It's out near the 30. Louisville 164 rushing yards in the first half against defense of Clark Lee. He did not expect to give up more yards in the first half than they gave up on average in a game last year. Stop and go for Hall, and he has slammed down a physical tackle in the backfield made by Owusu. I think Jeremiah Wusu as season goes on. They're looking for more playmakers at that next level. He's going to be a superstar for Notre Dame's defense. Well, nice ovation for the Louisville crowd. They appreciate the energy and the fight of this underdog team in Satterfield's first game. But it is the Irish going to the locker room with a seven-point lead. And let's hear from Brian Kelly with Maria. All right, Coach. We saw a fumble turn into a touchdown for Ian Book. What were you coaching him up on the sidelines about? Well, he's just playing a little tentative. You know, he's just got to relax and be Ian Book. You know, he's thinking a little too much. Just trust his coaching, trust his teaching, and, and just play. It's the first game. You know, he's got the weight of the world on him. And just you know, got to relax and, and got to go play. And he will. He'll come back and play better in the second half. Any other adjustments you want to make in the halftime? Yeah, we got to contain the football a little bit better. Obviously, we didn't do a very good job, you know, with the speed option. And we made some adjustments there. We're running the ball very well. Uh, clean up some things, obviously, and run support you know defensively and tackling uh, you know we had a, obviously a couple of plays offensively that I'd like to get back but we're running the ball effectively we're starting to settle down on defense let's pick up on that in the second half we should be in good shape All right, thanks coach we may Comprehensive. Have a new leader in the clubhouse for a halftime interview walk off with a coach I know he wants to say something to his team but that was, that was outstanding. comprehensive analysis yeah. from Brian Kelly <laughs> love it 21-14, the Irish with a late touchdown, lead by seven at Louisville. Halftime report coming up. Set for the second half, ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Capital One. The ninth-ranked Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. And the Louisville Cardinals, the ACC on ESPN. And Notre Dame came in here on the 12-0 regular season, a playoff bid expecting to dominate Juwan Pass and Louisville. Running game for both teams has been productive. That crazy sequence at the end of the half, back to back to back fumbles. Set up Ian Book. He redeemed himself for his own fumble with a touchdown run. And now Louisville gets the football back. And excellent start. They're in the game. They got to halftime, hanging with the Irish. Now, what can they do in the second 30 minutes? You know, and, and I think if you would have told Scott Satterfield halftime, you're going to be tied now down seven. I think he's going to be pretty happy with that, considering the team that he's going up against. And now it's about first week. Halftime adjustments. What what can you do? What did you learn? And what can you do to get back to where they were in their first couple series when they were kind of moving the ball up and down the field? Since then, they've not had a whole lot of luck against Brian Kelly's defense. Yeah, both defenses, if they're getting gashed for huge gains in the first quarter, settled in in the second quarter. Doris Boot will carry to the end zone and be left right there. Let's take a look at 
to do more in a jiffy. Brought to you by Jiffy Lube. Yeah, this, this defense, first two series, Louisville up and down the field. 163 yards and a couple touchdowns. And then Clark Lee made some adjustments, and the defense responded, getting their eyes on the ball. Saw the freshman Hamilton. Look at O'Quara, the difference in 15 pounds. Helped being able to turn that, uh, that, that play right there into a fumble. But the bull rush, no longer just speed off the edge. He can use speed, but also use his power now at 250 pounds. See how the offense bogged down. Pass accounting for both the Louisville touchdowns on the ground. Passing, he's four for 13. And flips it back. It's a screen. Atwell almost stumbled, keeps his feet, and finally does dive across the 40. Ball comes out. Is it live? There wasn't a whistle there. Now it's signal Louisville football. It'll I, move it back, but yet I sure, another I sure ball thought, on the ground. I thought he was down, and then the ball came out. We'll have to see. Knees down. Looks yeah. like he's down. I think they'll take a look at that. Nova will gain some field position back. Watch the knee. Boom, right there. And he looks like he still has the ball in the right hand. Yeah, the, the, watch the play. Watch him bring pressure. Bring pressure. It's a perfect time to be able to get the ball behind that pressure. Notre Dame brings blitzes. Linebackers going the wrong way. And all that space for Atwell. Crawford's hand is coming in to punch the ball out just as Atwell's knee is hitting the ground. Another one of those bang bang plays for Bob Welch in the replay booth. There's the ball being punched. I think the knee is on the there. ground before it's out. Mm -hmm. so it's the knees opposite down. of the ruling before. That's right. Again, because it was ruled a fumble on the field, has to be. Burden of and, proof falls and on by the way, the right, that he had possession. If you're calling that live, that's the right call on the field. And then let the replay booth try to figure it out and try to correct the mistake or correct the uh, the call on the field. Dave Kataya, it's been an interesting first half. Bob Welch, the replay official, was in here talking about the judgment calls they had to make. Here's another one that's pretty close. How do you see this? Well, Chris, as you described, it looks to me that that knee is down. Then the ball comes out. At the review, the ball carry was down at the 41-yard line. First down, Louisville. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes and 55 Dave seconds. Dave says it here, and Dwayne Hayes says it there. Yep. So they'll Thank reverse you. the call. It'll be a gain back to the spot where Atwell was down at the 41. And I think what Scott Satterfield saw and talked probably to his staff about was getting back to getting the ball on the perimeter where they, they have speed and in space. Mixing up, you know, occasionally in the middle, but also working the edges a little bit more, forcing Notre Dame to try to make plays out there against that speed. Hawkins picks his way. Quick burst gets him five on first down across the 45. You impressed by the run game scheme, or are you disappointed in Notre Dame's run stop ability so far? Well, a little bit of both. I mean, they're breaking in new linebackers, new leadership when you lose Tranquil and Tony. Or Coney, so you, you got to be able to replace that. But how can you not be impressed with what Louisville's capable of doing in this new scheme with with Scott Satterfield after the way they played late last year? Patience as Hawkins picks his way, dives for a first down into Notre Dame territory. Maria. Well, Chris, Coach Satterfield said that it was a tale of two quarters in that first half. Offense played great in the first, defense great in the second. And he also said that in order to win this game, they will have to complete some balls downfield. So they might be looking to take some strikes as this game progresses. It's true, Maria. There hadn't been anything remotely like a downfield strike yet. But the run moves the ball in Irish territory. First down. Quick hand off to Hawkins. Sheds a tackle again. Hawkins is going to be run down from behind by Khalid Kareem, the defensive end, but he still picked up seven. That's a good job of blocking, although they get away with a hold by Robbie Bell, the, the right guard. He tackles his man, trying to trying to be able to make a block on a linebacker, Drew White. Could it be a good block when he tackles the guy? Or? The left side did a good okay. job of blocking the, the right guard. It's good if you get away with it. The right guard, he got away with one there. He, he literally tackled, the, he jumped on the back of, uh, of Drew White. And the umpire did not see it. It's the kind of first down play that Satterfield would dream about there. They got seven, so it's second and short. Hammer right away. Hassan Hall ran into a wall, got about a yard. Well, that is a big time hit. Tonga Bailoa 
Mosa right there just lowers his shoulder into Hall. Watch this real time here. In the Hawaiian Islands, they hit physical <laughs> yeah. football because you got Tungabailoa and Gilman, both Hawaiians on this defense, and yeah. two of the hardest hitters. 285 pounds there, lowering the boom. So now it's third and two. Big play, the Irish 40 early in the half. And a whistle and a timeout taken. The play clock winding down. Satterfield knows this one is important. You want to answer Notre Dame's late touchdown of the half, get up to a positive start, and they'll talk about this third and two play now. Monday Night College Football, but a week from tonight, the 50th season of Monday Night Football kicks off on ESPN. Drew Brees and the Saints, Deshaun Watson and the Texans at seven, and then Oakland. Tony Brown making his Raiders debut against the Broncos. Five Eastern, a special edition of Monday Night Countdown. Gets it going. After the timeout, the Cardinals try to end an 0 for 4 skid on third down. And a handoff up the middle to Hassan Hall is breaking free. And my guy Herb Street called the exact play in our timeout. Good call, Coach. You, use, use 2 2 Atwell speed as eye candy. Make those linebackers feel that speed. And then you run up the middle with either the quarterback or the running back Hall. Just enough to make them hesitate to give the lineman a chance to get up to him. Shows, showed a little bit of power running through some arm tackles tonight, Hassan Hall. And Atwell has flashed his speed enough that that defense has to pay attention. You let him have a crease, and it's bye bye. Yep. Good decoy there. Move the sticks to the 24 yard line. Now, first down play action pass on the move. Cuts it back. Lost the ball again, and the Irish have it. Coming up with it is Dalen Hayes as passes fumble for a second time. Ogundeje knocked it out of his hands. Ogundeje. Right where he needs to be. You know, I, I thought initially off of this play action look, it looked like he had room to get outside, but a good job of keeping contained. Watch him right here, work to get outside and then get his hand on the football. But man, pass has got to do a better job when he gets out there protecting the football. See how loose it is away from his body, holding it with one hand, gives a defender plenty of an opportunity to knock the ball away to get the ball back to Ian Book. That was gonna, a heck of a drive they had there. They're going to count on pass to be a runner a lot more this season in this offense. You know there's going to be ball security drills in practice after his second fumble. Jones cuts it back, shows his strength. Looked like a wide run. He said, wait a minute, I'm making a left turn. Big gain up the middle. When you and I and everybody probably talking at halftime thinking, okay, they're averaging close to 10 yards a carry. I think they're going to probably go back to running the football, trying to dominate that line of scrimmage. Looks like we got an injured That's player. That's Kane Pass there. That's the older brother of the quarterback who got cut down on a block and being looked at by the athletic trainers. It's another test for this Louisville defense. Their offense had moved the ball, appeared to be threatening to tie this game up. And the Irish with another takeaway. It's three Louisville fumbles. And quarterback, all three of them. This is a tough guy to lose here. Pass is a senior. The brothers come from Columbus, Georgia. Safety, who's a big part of that that group, is being helped Ooh. off limping heavily. Yeah, he's the one who actually made the tackle on the play. Mm. He's been active. I mean, he's he's listed as a safety, but they they have him up near the line of scrimmage tonight quite a bit in that run game, trying to help out. Unorthodox way to walk up. Through. Almost looks like it's a cramp. Does. The, way, the way he's walking. Yeah. We hope that's all it is. Sophomore, inexperienced sophomore, Jack Fago replaces him at safety. Jones is the back. He's got it. Picks his way and stacked up after a six-yard gain. You know, with the way that first half ended, where it felt like it was going to be tied at 14 to 14, and we had the three different fumbles, and eventually Ian Book was able to put it into the end zone to give the Irish the seven point lead. You could say this is a big series for this Louisville defense right now. They, they cannot afford to get down by 14. Book has a lot of time again, rolls, pump fakes, and will tightrope for a short gain. They'll spot him out just short of the marker. 
pressured by Dana Kennard. Jones over 100 yards tonight. 10 for 105. Nice average and a touchdown. Third and one. But the Cardinals have another short yarded stop in them. Jones to the left. Has it. And he's going to be stopped. Another stout play by this beleaguered defense. OKK and company make it fourth down. Well, they're setting the edge, and then they're watching the inside how much movement they have, then they bring the linebackers up. Notre Dame trying to collapse that left side of the Louisville defense, but unable to do so, and it gave the linebackers a chance to get in there and get the penetration. Heck of a stop again on third and short. Some offense with a proud offensive line that's been stopped on third and two, third and one, and third and one again tonight, and they send out Bramblett to punt. Burns charges up at his short punt and makes the fair catch at the 24. Global defense does its job. Cardinals get the football back down seven. Tonight's All-State Mayhem moment, taking you back to Doak Camel Stadium, and they come from behind, win by the Broncos They're of down, Boise State. Boise State down 21 to three on the road in that humidity. Why didn't Florida State just jump on the ball there? And Boise State gets it back to end up scoring a touchdown, take the lead. But Hank Bachmeyer, remember that name? Freshman quarterback makes his first start, gets a win on the road, brings the Broncos back. Keep an eye. You looking for that group of five team to look out for late in the year? I think it's going to be Boise State. Ran for 108 plays in that game. Yep. How about Jalen Hurts, the way he oh, operated nice. Oklahoma's offense last night in the win over Houston? A couple of years of frustration came out in that Six game. Six touchdowns he accounted for. And how about Mac Brown getting a big win in Charlotte and a big uh, win over South Carolina? And on the other end, mm. it's Florida State we just talked about in Tennessee, both suffering difficult losses to recover from. Georgia State goes to Rocky Top and wins. And off running right and wrestled down Hawkins. How about Hank Bachmeyer's brother's names? Bear, Buck, and Tiger. You're, just, you're just I, I I've never met the kid. Bachmeyer I love it. for Heisman. You're just driving the train <laughs> here. Well, well, it, much like Bo Nix, you watch a guy and he, you can just see something's a little different about this guy. There's something a little different about Bachmeyer. See what ACC fans, uh, Mac Brown's heels, and I have my attention. The Hurricanes go there this Saturday, conference openers. Second and 12 after Hawkins would stop behind the line and now pass rolling out and delivers behind Atwell. They tried to target him a lot, but the Irish secondary are paying attention to him. That's Crawford in coverage. Last four possessions, give you an idea. They, they opened this game, the first two possessions, Louisville moving right down the field. Pass was in control, running, throwing, two touchdowns. Since then, their last four possessions a fumble, a fumble, the half, and another fumble. So Clark Lee, I think it's very different right now. And it's not just dominating defensive line. I think he's adjusting his look. There's a good look at Clark Lee. Getting hit more zone and getting more eyes on the football as opposed to playing as much man to man as they were early. Atwell far left and now a flinch in the interior offensive line. And the Irish. Ball start. Ball start. Offense. Drawn Number off. 59. Five yeah. yard penalty. Third down. T.J. McCoy, the center. Both quarterbacks, Kirk, 63 yards passing. Passes accounted for the two touchdown runs, but just five of 15 and just 63 yards on those completions. So, really, we're completely bereft of a downfield completion tonight. Nothing. Nothing. And Both sides. Yeah. Both teams trying to keep everything in front of them, especially Notre Dame, after the adjustments they've made. Playing with deeper safeties. Yeah, they're really deep now in third and 17. Decent protection ball out. Catch made. Nope. It's not made. It's dropped by Atwell. It was closely covered by the freshman Hamilton. And here comes the punt team. That's where that length of Hamilton at 6 4. Remember the freshman. Great feel, great just instincts for a, a young defensive back. Atwell's only 5 9. This is where that length. Of defensive backs can really help out being able to get around a receiver and affect the ball. Pass unable to lead his receiver into open yeah. space, made it tough. So Fink is back deep. King 
kicks it high, not terribly deep, and thinks going to drift and make a fair catch. And Notre Dame will have great field position. Ball at the 43, 21 14 Irish, 40 yard punt. The aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, recognizing those who strive to rise above the rest. Goodyear, more driven. Marty and McGee hanging out up there, checking things. Hope they have binoculars. Tell you, when you look down and look across, you see more empty seats than you should. This thing was pretty full, and for some reason, how the Louisville fans had well, they're used to taking off, or they they're used not to shutting it down, down like the team after. last year. The, the team's not shutting it down. He's no. got, these guys are fighting. Book again looks to throw on first down. It's a crossing route, and Claypool's got space. And the big fella with those long strides turns back. And it delivers a shot to three DBs, and it takes five guys to get him down to the 26. Yeah, Brock Wright, the tight end, clears, which takes a linebacker, and then you'll have Claypool coming underneath. Watch Etheridge, 17. He kind of goes with him. That opens up a nice hole right there in the zone. And then somebody's got to be there. you got to get off the blocks, get a rally to the football. Can't just be on the middle linebacker going with the middle with the tight end. 31-yard gain. Book again looking to throw on first down across the middle. Hits his man in stride. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Tommy Tremble, the tight end. Tommy Tremble getting his hands on the ball. It's more like what you would see from Notre Dame. Too high safety. Weakness is the middle of the field, and that's where they attack. He has to respect the outside receiver. Well-designed plays, just Four verticals, pick on that safety. If he works to the outside, you go back to the middle where the opening is. If he stays to the inside, you go outside. Good read, easy read for Ian Book and a touchdown. And Cole Komet, the stud tight end, now with a broken collarbone for at least another game. So guys like Brock Wright and Tremble have to step up, and that's his first career touchdown reception. Pretty nice. Sophomore out of Georgia. Pretty nice when the big fella comes in and gets that too high look and the middle of the field is wide open. He's got to reach up and catch the ball. You said how successful they had been running on first down, not throwing, but on that drive, a couple of first down throws. They get the space. They loosen up the defense. Offside. Offside. Defense. Offside. That penalty is declined. We'll have a try. So the two passes cover 57 yards, just about a half a minute. And now it's a two touchdown lead for Kelly's team. It's going to make Book feel better about his evening. Jonathan Door, he needs reps. He needs reps kicking PATs and field goals. So far, so good. I, I'm, I know it's a 14 point game, but after what Louisville went through last year, I'm really excited to see how they respond compared to what they did a year ago, now down 14. Whenever a participating university makes a field goal or a PAT, Allstate will make a contribution to that university's general scholarship one. Thank you, Allstate. UFC 242. We'll tell you about that momentarily as the Irish kick it off. Book says that's what the passing game is supposed to look like. You get a crosser, you play action, get the tight end involved. I think that's what they're expecting most of the night to look like, right? Take it a while. The running game has been solid throughout. Well, 27 and 0. Habib Magomedov takes on the interim champ. Interim champ. Dustin Poirier, main event, pay per view in English and Espanol, starting at 2 Eastern. Got to order the main card by going to ESPNplus.com slash EPV and download the app. Now, you said it. Remember when Habib beat up McGregor? He yeah. got a little crazy after the fight. He did. Oh, he's, a, he's a wild guy. I'm going to watch that one. First fight back since that. I think he got suspended, didn't he? he after did. they went crazy after in the ring. Octagon. Well, if this were an octagon right now, Louisville would be on the ground. Now, now last they, year, they they'd be in the locker room. Yeah, we're right. Yeah. yeah. All right. But see if, let's see if they want to keep fighting tonight. Take it to Hall, pass, pass the ball, and now flips it near side. And a catch made on the sidelines 
by Tobias Little, the tight end. I mean, we're kind of kidding about it, but really, that, that was a problem for this team. And, and when you came in with Scott Satterfield and his staff from Appalachian State, where they're used to winning, he found a team that was defeated mentally, emotionally. And he part of their, forget the scheme, part of this was just trying to teach them, rebuild their confidence, teach them about being happy, being prideful in who you are, and learning how to fight through adversity. And here you are down 14. Last year, they would have shut it down. Let's see what they do tonight. All cuts it back, runs hard, and move the sticks. Now they've been up to this point. They've done a pretty good job of being resilient through some adversity, but they haven't had this kind of deficit, so this will be the first time. I mean, last year was so obvious. Their body language, finger pointing, it was just, it was not a good thing. That's good. No, pass is a lot to overcome, too. He's been responsible for the three fumbles, has not thrown an interception yet. As a runner, 55 on the ground. At well in motion, the snap gets away, and they have to fall on it. That snap was fired low and gave the quarterback no chance. Well, Cole Bentley is in its center, who's a lefty. This snap goes wild to low, kind of to the right. I, you know, again, you can make an argument. He can get his hands down at 6'4 and make a play on it, but it's not ideal, especially with that well coming in motion. But a different center, different snap with the left, and gets away from pass. It's a good point left and right hand. We asked him you're going to really rotate centers Bentley and McCoy in the shotgun. It's tricky. And he moves them back. Second and 19. Difficult to recover from a loss like that. Pass fire short and dropped. Trying to go down low. Come up with his Devonte Pete's and all of a sudden nothing going right for this team. No bad snap drop football. Now you're looking at third and forever at third and 19. Think about it again the last five possessions in Louisville fumble fumble into the half fumble and a punt. Give Notre Dame's credit. We're sitting here talking a lot about Louisville's offense. Got to continue to give Notre Dame's defense a lot of credit. And now pre snap flag. Offense number seven five yard penalty. Down. Well, you, you talked about it. How will they respond? They've been rattled going down, you know, two scores, the quick strike, Notre Dame touchdown, and this offense has responded with a series of mistakes. Absolutely. One thing that feels very different about Notre Dame, they don't have some of those marquee names, the leadership of Tranquil and Coney, uh, Julian Love, but one thing they do have is depth. It feels like they have more depth on defense. Option pitch. Dangerous because it was behind Hall and very fast. He barely gets his hand on it. Hamilton forces him out in a disastrous series. Ends fourth down. Yeah, lucky to get that ball out. You see Kareem closing in on him, and you said it. Fast and behind, not <laughs> necessarily <laughs> ideal for a back on the option pitch. They flirted. They tried for another fumble in that series. Think. Figures to give the Irish good field possession again. He's standing at his own 35. High boot by King. Think retreats. It's a good punt and makes a hair catch at the 25 yard line. Told you about the double header. It's a short week. Getting ready for LSU and Texas. A lot of anticipation in Austin. The day begins. On ABC at 3:30 Eastern Time is Jimbo and the Aggies go to Death Valley. That was a, a classic game. And oh man, it was. I don't feel Kellen, go. Kellen Mond threw for over 400 yards with Jimbo Fisher's offense at home, and now Brent Venables has had an entire offseason to get his defense ready for Mond and, and Jimbo Fisher's attack. I, I can't wait to watch that one live from Death Valley. That'll be a good one. Game days in Austin. Reese Davis joining you on the call as I do U.S. Open Championship duties next week. So Book off that touchdown pass retreats and first down and just throws it away. Knocked down after the throw. I mean, obviously up a couple touchdowns. Want to get the passing game going with bigger games down the road in mind, right? Oh, of course. You know, you, if you're watching this game, and it's the first game, I mean, you're going to see a lot of improvement. But if you're watching this game, and you have Ian Book back, of course he has new weapons that need to be established. But this is not the way you. Probably expected to see Notre Dame's offense look as far as throwing the no football. Foul for an eligible receiver downfield. The ball was grounded legally out of bounds. Second down. Pick up the flag. 
Why was that even in question? He was almost to the sideline and threw that ball well beyond the line of scrimmage. That was a given. And that should not be a flag. Kelly with his offensive play sheet in front of him. Chip Long, by the way, calls the place was hired by Bobby Petrino as a grad assistant here. Spent some time in Louisville. Hook. They come after him. Gets it away. Catch made underneath by Tremble in the tight end who cut the touchdown minutes ago is becoming involved in this offense. Well, you, you take a chance getting after Ian Book with linebacker blitzes. It's going to leave an opening behind them if they don't get home. They bring both the linebackers and look at that. Does a nice job of feeling them, almost baiting them towards him, letting them come and then going right over top of them to the big tight end who comes into the game, gets a few catches. Jones dragged down. We knew we'd see lots of faces. Kelly thought maybe 10 to 12 guys would touch the ball on offense. What he was excited about was that he said Ian Book has a very close relationship with really everybody on offense, not just the starters, anybody who might get involved. And that's a change. It is, and I thought it was neat to hear him say, you know, practice if a guy like Lawrence Keyes who's a freshman makes a mistake. Instead of yelling at him, his style is to kind of walk over to him after the rep and talk to him about the mistake he made. But from the pocket, he doesn't see anything he likes, and he'll take off and shimmy and then lower the shoulder for a short gain. So he's doing less yelling. Brian Kelly doing less yelling. Chip Long, we got to work on. <laughs> yeah, he'll he's still good. Out of yeah, he's good. <laughs> he'll, he, he, he balances everything out. But no, I, I think it's kind of cool to watch the difference in styles of different quarterbacks around the country and how they try to win the team over. You hear coaches win the team over and that's one of the ways you can do it and how you how you lead and how you how you perform when things are good and when things are bad in practice. Cardinals crowds had to make some noise because they get a stop on third and four. They rush for book has time gets it out through it into traffic right to think it was well covered and broken up by Chandler Jones the sophomore corner fourth down. That's where you wonder if the quarterback and Fink are on the same page. Fink just turns and it's kind of going working his way to the outside and the ball is thrown behind him it makes me wonder that if book was expecting him to just turn and, and sit as opposed to going out the two veteran players just not on the same page there and they're fortunate that ball was not intercepted by by uh, Louisville so that's dangerous Jones had he been able to grab the football had green turf in front of him defense has not given up no a high punt from Bramlett. Mm, fair catch signaled at the 15 yard line. ACC football is here. Visit ACCN.com to check for providers in your area. If you don't see yours listed, contact them. Demand. Demand. It says here, carry the ACC network. Uh, you said next Saturday, Reese Davis will be calling the uh, the LSU Texas game with me. You'll be doing the the championship right at Flushing Meadows. Yep. Who, who's your who are you expecting to be uh, in the championship for the men and the women? But it, women changes day by day. I thought it was going to be Naomi Osaka mm -hmm. knocked out Coco Guff, then she was knocked out. Right. Uh, I have Serena's. Serena match. have a chance. 24 hours from now, I'll be calling Serena's. I, she I, have I, a shot I, I, to get to the finals. Great shot. I would say she's the favorite right favorite now. Favorite yeah. to win it all. Yeah. Beautiful. Atwell, he's strung out and dropped. Could not get to the edge. And that's Drew White, the big run stop linebacker. Another play in space. Yeah, you know what that is? That's saying, okay, you beat me on this before. Watch his vision, and then he takes off. Anticipating that, that's a great job of just knowing exactly what to see based on formation, based on where knowing where number one, 2 2 Atwell is, seeing him coming, and then beating him and running to where he will be instead of running behind him. Great play. So another big loss on first down and on second and 16. He just looks dangerous, Hawkins, every time he gets the football. He and Hassan Hall, they're going to make some plays running the football this year. They sure are. You know, so one of the things that Clark Lee has against uh, quarterbacks is with the pass rush that they have, they don't always have to blitz. You know, you can rush four and get pressure on a quarterback and be effective. Look at this with their standard rush, just rushing three or four, one of nine because they're dropping seven in playing zone against a blitz. He's had more success. Often you see those numbers reverse, right? Yeah. The quarterback. Yeah. They've got three outstanding pass rushers in Kareem, Hayes, and Okwara. 
And on third down like this, they get them all in the field together. They pick up the pressure pass, rolls and delivers, and Atwell's got it. And he slips down, but it's a first down as they keep the drive alive. Well, they flushed him. They, they rushed four. They, they got pressure on him. But give pass credit for his vision downfield where he eventually he's able to find Atwell who gets kind of finds that soft space Be Watching his quarterback Running for his life. He's able to run and find a hole in that the back end of the secondary really between Gilman and the linebacker Bogle ball right at the middle it's on the ground looks like the Cardinals have got it back, but they are just Flirting with turnovers every possession yeah, here. Yeah, and, and ball never got in uh, to Hawkins. I don't think he ever had his hands on it. I don't know if he wasn't expecting it or if he thought it might be a fake, but ball was put upfield. Yeah, maybe? ball was put on his stomach and he just did not clamp down on top of it. And he's fortunate to scramble there to be able to pick up the football. It looked like there were two or three Notre Dame jerseys there right around the ball, just having to bounce his way. How about that? Five fumbles today. It was a pretty clean start, and then fumbleitis broke out. There's a carry to the right side, secures the football short gain, and set up the third and four. I'm looking forward to watching the Notre Dame linebackers just grow. We were watching them tonight with Drew White uh, get a chance. Bill all has moved from playing that that hybrid rover spot last year, now moving over to the other inside linebacker spot. A Wusu playing a lot tonight six It's a good-looking group. They just lose so much experience with Tavon Coney and Drew Tranquil moving on yeah, Tranquil was like the pre-snap quarterback of the defense, yeah, right? So yeah. other guys have to take on that role Final minute of the third quarter Pass gets it out quickly and the catch is made breaking free. It's a first down huge gain for Marshawn Ford and he's running down inside the 30 this is an example of what we just talked about the linebacker play. We just bragged on Drew White Now he's going to be matched up man-to-man -man right here And this is just about can, can you stay with him? Can you get out there quickly enough to be able to make a play? He's there but just a step behind to give forward who Louisville's very high on his upside as a tight end You can see everybody's playing man-to-man. -man. They have their backs there to Ford So once he's able to break free from white Chris a lot of yards to pick up X running back is really more of a receiver than a blocking tight end. Hometown guy. 37 yard gain. The Cardinals threatening. They're still in this game. They're in it. They're in they made it. it to the fourth quarter. Folks up, jumping around, stopping. It's a stadium record in 58,187. A couple of very lean years, lean and lifeless for the most part in this ballpark. But tonight, the team is down 14. They're showing some fight back and threatening. You score here, believe. it's it's game on. They put it they put it in the end zone here. Coach Satterfield trying to get the attention of pass in the offense from the sideline. First down run. It's a reverse. Atwell's got it. He can throw it. High school quarterback lost it over the head of Marshawn Ford. He was a 4,000-yard passer at Miami Northwestern. Oh, you boy. wonder if they might put in a special they, play. They said in our media, oh, he can do it all. He can run. He can he can uh, catch. He can throw. And Chris said, throw. And here it is right here. He looks to the outside. He's got him. Crawford trying to come over if the ball is thrown lower obviously the big tight end Ford is able to take care and protect the ball But just a little bit high and what a call an aggressive play call there by Satterfield That was saying doggone it. I know had I can throw it. I, I had oh. him. He got a little excited because he well, saw Ford that open yeah, 12 men and offense 12 players lining up the formation five-yard penalty second down this is mental errors you got to avoid we get so few chances like that Special plays, you know, they play a role tonight at well You want to use his multiple towns as much as you can they weren't fully utilized last year That's for sure. They tried to get on the ball a whole bunch tonight. They've targeted him ten times He's caught five of them. Oh, he's just he's just a guy whether you're handing it to him You're throwing it to him on a reverse where he can throw it. You just he's just 
on this roster currently he's he's one of the more dynamic playmakers they have so you got to find different ways and be creative get him in the ball he comes in motion again they're going to run it back to the boundary side and heavy traffic just gaining about a yard there Gilman stopped him the other thing you can do with him is that you know we've seen three or four times where they the Notre Dame safeties they're, they're probably all yelling at each other where one is they're, they're probably IDing him and Everybody's aware, so sometimes you use him as a jet motion or something to try to freeze the linebacker, freeze the safety. Look at Notre Dame continuing to roll bodies in. They need 13 on the third down. You wonder if they're thinking about two plays here. Down a couple touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they have to. Play clock's winding down. They've got a couple timeouts. They get the snap off, and it's a run. And Hawkins is going to gain about four. It's going to be fourth down and nine. Hmm. And they're bringing out the field goal unit. Maybe not quite enough gained on that play, but I thought that potentially you look at that as a two play sequence. The yeah, field no goal just gets you within 11. I think he, there was no hesitation there at all. Very reliable lefty. This is from 42 yards and Creaky. She makes these routinely. But you jinxed him. I was waiting for the shank, but no, he got through. <laughs> I was going to crush you if he did that. Not what they were looking for, but Louisville chipping away. 11 point margin. Well, the All-State mayhem moment, when, when the Cardinals had the football, it's been kind of mayhem after the first quarter. They put it on the ground five times. Pass has lost three fumbles. Well, there, there's been mayhem moments, both good and bad. Like you said, with pass, they, they've had some fumbles, but you know they they've somehow continued to fight, which has been a new characteristic of theirs, despite these fumbles. And they're hanging around in this game, down 11 with 13:25 to go. You can see that turnovers were a massive problem near the bottom with minus 12 last season, and they're sitting at a minus two tonight. Creaky's 44th career field goal did stop the 21 zip run of the Irish. If we can just get the home crowd to have the same fight as this new Cardinal team, they'd have a heck of a heck of a deal here. Yeah, they continue to, to trickle out of here. I know you got to go to work tomorrow morning, but well, don't come to the game if you got to go to work or you got to go to school. Tell them if you're coming to the game, stay for the game. Teams fighting. They need your they need a crowd. Fenway Park. Sunday night baseball the final series of the season between the Yankees and the Red Sox. I saw him play earlier this year in London final series Tanaka by the way is on the mound and that offensive beat down with pitching debacle there Wembley Stadium 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app Louisville Slugger headquarters of course beautiful. Have they given you a bat when you I got a few. I, have got, yeah, <laughs> I, I do have a few. <laughs> I can like the sound of a wooden bat. Book flushed again, has space, and then makes a nice little cut, and he'll pick up seven yards. I don't know if he's accomplished what one of the goals was, Kirk, was to have better pocket presence. It's like talking to Jesse Palmer on the field, see if he can sit in there, survey, find the receivers. He's escaped pretty quickly tonight. Well, I think part of the reason he's escaped, especially up the middle, is when the linebackers clear out. I mean, picking up some yards, six yards on first and ten, I, I, you know, that's pretty good for me. I'll take that. In the pocket. This time he hangs in the pocket and now just back pedals and, and throws it That's away. Good. But there's going to be times when he's going to have to make plays Absolutely. in there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there was there was some good coverage that time on second down to get this Louisville defense and what's left of this crowd is now getting into the game. They got another third down opportunity to try to get after Ian Book. I would recommend spying with that linebacker just in case the rush gets to him and he wants to step up and take off. Irish. Two of eight on third down. They failed a number of times on third and short. Book has protection, delivers a strike, and it's a first down at the 40 yard line. Nice Beginning job. Getting to use Tremble as a big part of this offense now. Yep. And this time, Chris, it's zone. And for Tremble not having a lot of experience, watch him just sit in, find the soft spot in the zone. Nice job of getting the spacing and finding that hole. And Book waits for him and puts it right on the money. And they used some tempo, Kirk, after the first down. And Louisville was just running three defenders off the field when it was snapped. It's a short gain for Jones. 
They're just trying to catch Louisville napping, trying to catch him off guard. Nice job by Ray J. Burns, who has a tough job. They call that the card position, that hybrid outside linebacker that's kind of a nickel that at times will blitz, run support like he just did there. Sometimes he plays man to man. We see it every week. Teams have that position, and Burns is playing it tonight. Jones stops. Burns, a guy who was at Ohio State, transferred back to his hometown. It was second in the Mr. Football voting here in Kentucky. And he made a nice play again. You know, that, that is a tough position, like I said, because of the versatility. In Ohio State, he was more of a corner. And even last year here, he was a corner. And that time, he, he set the edge and came up and forced the back uh, Smith to have to cut back inside. Under 200 pounds, but you're right, playing tough. Yeah. Another third down. They need seven. Remember to watch Book. Got a mirror. From the pocket, high throw, catch made, Keys, and the young freshman in his first game out of New Orleans getting involved. A couple of grabs tonight. Yeah, again, Ian Book just not quite in rhythm tonight, but give the freshman Keys, who's known as a speedster, a lot of credit. Right at the first down mark, going back up in the air and making the play on this ball. He doesn't lead him in there, throws it behind him, but boy, I'd be excited if I'm a Notre Dame fan seeing the hands on the young freshman like that. In the pocket on first down, Book retreating and will heave it out of bounds. Still looking to make a downfield play. What did Monte Caban pressured him? He just kind of threw that ball away. The fans obviously upset, wanting intentional grounding. There was a receiver down that sideline, but he did just kind of retreat and just. We got to have Dave Kataka yeah, the clinic on the rules of intentional grounding. That's not that's not intentional grounding. I appreciate their spirit. Yeah. Irish not trying to just bleed the clock out there aggressive with the passing game up 11 here Smith in the flat goes up and gets it and able to dodge a tackle and dive to the 40 to set up a, another third down they'll need about four Quarter unfold to ask you to give a grade of this Notre Dame offense tonight. They were taking on one of the worst defenses in the country last year, but one that's playing much better tonight. Jones is the back. Play clock at five. Book flushed again. Has room. Will he get there? Yes. Dives for a first down. Near the 36. So they've been hitting that inside throw, a lot of them on third down, and so there's an awareness now by the defense. So they're they're looking for this. So what Book does is he says, if you're going to take away, see the eyes of that defender, he's coming into the inside. Okay, but I'm going to get to the corner. So he basically just picks on a defender that time, Abdullah, saying, I'm either going to throw the slant if you if you widen out, or if you take it away, I'll use my speed and pick up another first down on third down. He's run for one touchdown and also extended drives several times with his legs on third down. Fake to Jones. Book looking downfield and fires near sideline. Claypool trying to work his way into open space. Still going. Big fella gets the edge. He'll be knocked down inside the five. And I absolutely love this by Claypool. Who's going to be a guy that can make a play in this this passing game after the catch? We know about some of the young guys. Here's the guy that's been challenging himself and the coaches have challenged to become the guy in this receiving core. And instead of just catching it, maybe getting tackled or going out of bounds, he decides he's going to make something happen and goes all the way across to show you what he can do with the ball in his hands after a catch. Beautiful. Actually retreated, gave up yardage to get the corner and picked up 34. He can go for his size. Smith in the game on first and goal. He's got it. Banging, fighting, stop short at the one. Been an impressive drive for Notre Dame after sure the, has. the field goal by Louisville. They've moved it 11 plays, 74 yards. And converted three third downs, as you mentioned, to keep that clock moving, keep this drive alive. They're un about under eight and a half minutes. Looking for a touchdown.
Smith again barrels into the end zone and the Irish had the lead. Second touchdown for the sophomore. That's 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 a big time drive man that that's that's huge. Louisville not going away just kind of hanging around just enough and on the road you need a drive mixing up the run with the pass controlling the line of scrimmage good job by chip long and mixing up the play calling and I mentioned the three third downs that they were able to convert on huge just a great drive 12 plays and 75 yards and a touchdown Claypool has been the main receiving target tonight 34 yard play to set up the touchdown all touchdowns no field goals tonight for this Notre Dame offense and the lead 18 with 815 to play. ESPN College Football is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Valspar Stain. This is stain changing. Get it at Lowe's. New Rockney, the only coach in Notre Dame history to last longer than 11 seasons. Lou Holtz, by the way, was the oldest head coach to patrol the sidelines at 59. Kelly's going to turn 58 in October. Figures to go well beyond that. He says you know, it's it's a difficult, demanding job, and, and no one has hit their 60th birthday and been on that job in history yet. I, I, you think he's ever looked better though? Not as great. I thought he looked great. Summer vacation in, in Scotland and yeah. Ireland with the family, yeah. celebrating in his wife's 25th wedding anniversary. I think he's in a good, peaceful place I, I to really begin do. the season. I think he's feeling more peaceful now than he was in the second quarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just think the last couple of years, it just feels like he he's got a different vibe about him. By the way, building a house, it's uh, three houses away from New Rockney's old house. Hall accelerates quickly, takes a shot, stop at the 24 yard line. It's unusual for college football head coaches to be able to take an extended vacation. He said that his three kids, their youngest is entering the senior year in high school, get them all together. A yeah. deal with a family of five is a special deal. He said, he, he was, as a coach, you really don't get a chance. You got to go over to Ireland to have the a family, going a family on, dinner. <laughs> yeah. Look, take it up to the local sports. He said they, he played 11 rounds of golf, had the rain gear on once. He said that is a charmed summer over there in Scotland. Yeah. Are you kidding? I know. You've told me. You usually You've been have over the rain many. gear on 11 times with 11 rounds of golf. In your world travels, is that one of your favorite spots? I love it. Yeah. yeah. Not for the golf, really, but just, you know, for the whiskey, maybe. Yeah. Pass from the pocket, swarmed and sacked. You know, he hasn't really been contained and sacked in the pocket a lot by this formidable pass How rush. Einish getting in there. And the inside, we so we get so used to these guys on the edge, Hayes and Okwara and Kareem, but it's nice to be able to see Kurt Heinisch be able to get in there and, and make a play and just get a push right up the middle into the into the face of Juwan Pass. The old nose guard from Pittsburgh, not the guy you'd expect to sack the quarterback. And now pass is flushed again, rolling out a lot of room. He can take off, tucks the ball, and scoots out across the 40. Well, uh, Chris, they blitzed the linebackers and played man. Look at the man to man. Everybody running with the receiver, so there's nobody left. When you blitz the linebacker, nobody accounts for the quarterback pass, and easy for him to get big yards with his speed. 233 yards on the ground for this Cardinals offense tonight. And a whistle flag false start again. False start. Offense. Number 60. Five yard penalty. First down. Louisville's got Eastern and then Western Kentucky up next. Then the conference opener in Tallahassee. Clemson comes in here October 19. That's the other rule. Big marquee home game, and he'll try to uh, do better than last year. It was 77 to 16 down there. Pass rolls, and it's incomplete. Trying to get the ball to Isaac Martin. This is a big marquee game. So is Clemson. If you if you wanted to get a ticket for either game, you had to buy season tickets at Miami, at NC State, and Kentucky, another rival that thumped them. They're on the road for that one. What they win last year? Zero in the ACC. Right, but overall, two, two games. 
You think a bowl game after seeing them tonight? I think I'm Ooh, trying, really? to, trying to get the six wins. I think you might as well. I don't they, know. I think maybe, they'd maybe be they thrilled with a bowl game. Of course. You've seen that much from them? Yeah, I, there's a lot to like about this team. Catch made by Des Fitzpatrick. Haven't been able to involve the junior receiver enough tonight. It contained him well. Oh boy, got to show the flashback. Yikes. Oh man, we were there. Oh, this was this James was not quick, last James year's quick, game. Cut, it, inside. cut back. No. They're stopped a couple of yards short in a great quarterback duel between Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson ended with a six-point victory for Clemson. Look at the different directions those programs have gone since would, that night. I would say in all the games you and I have had a chance to call, what is this, our fifth or sixth year, whatever mm -hmm. it is, I, we've called national championships together. We've called Rose Bowls, called some fun games. That game is one of the more memorable games. What a setting in Death Valley. And Lamar Jackson a week or two earlier, what he did here against Florida State's defense Offside. built Side. so much defense. hype up for that matchup between penalty. Lamar and Deshaun. And sometimes down. those hype quarterback duels don't pan out. That one it sure did. definitely did. Because and it looked like Clemson early, and Louisville came back in that second half and, and got within a possession. They were number and then, three in the country. Right. I mean, if he cuts back, if they score, oh, if they man. pull the upset off that, that game. I know. Remember, the Clemson went to the championship game. Sure did. Won it. Pass. Navigating his way. It was heavy traffic. Then he escapes and gets about six before Drew White stops him. You were talking yesterday, well, we all were, but you were fascinated with Scott Satterfield showing you he keeps a notebook from every year that he's called plays. And we were all, of course, asking about 07, 2007, you know, when you were, you guys went up against Michigan in the big house and he got all excited. Go, Hold on a second. I, I just wanted one the, story from him because it's 12 years ago to the day yesterday. Leaves the room, room, comes back this old back. spiral notebook with a yeah. water stain on it. So look at this. He said he keeps them from every year. He found the 07 one and showed us the play chart. From that Michigan game. I mean, this is the page. It, it's tiny writing. And as, he, as they would run the play, Armani <laughs> Edwards was the quarterback of that team. He's still in the CFL. They scratch it up. I, the water stain just perfect. Yeah, that's there. it. That's that's that's. It's not like we, John Gruden with 74 pages. I mean, that that's the play call. We were all saying that that belongs in the College Football Hall of Fame. Now, Michigan fans don't want to hear that, but that's one of the. They were. FCS at the time. That's yeah. one of the it's right up there with humongous Georgia. upsets in the history of the sport. Right up there with Georgia State beating Tennessee. Pass is going to be swarmed, and finally, Dalen Hayes, the senior defensive end, traps the quarterback. I'm going to take you back to this game again, 12 years ago yesterday, about a minute and a half to go. Mountaineers drove 69 yards. Set up the field goal. Wolverines driving down, attempt a field goal here. Blocked by wow. Corey Lynch. Wow. And Coach Jerry Moore ridden off the field. He's actually here tonight, 80 years old, on the sidelines, supporting his former assistant, Satterfield. That is very cool. Very cool. Across the middle, Atwell, and once again targeted, but just off his fingertips. And it'll be third down and long. You know, and from that point on, everybody that had to play App State in a non-conference game was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> Who are they going to get next? Well, they got the Wolverines, and you're right. They were came close. They've been dangerous since they've Penn come State, up to the FPS. Tennessee. Yeah, they yeah. played a lot of teams. Took the Vols so overtime. They battled Penn State yeah. hard it, in Happy Valley. Yep. Irish defense back, pendling way back. They'll concede a run like this to pass, although he spins down inside the 35 and makes it fourth and about six. He continues to show a lot of fight tonight. He's had to do a lot, scrambling, obviously throwing. Running the football tonight. He's got 15 carries now up to 82 yards rushing Almost leads him in rushing right now Hawkins is the Leading rusher and another flag they need seven now. They need 12 well, everybody moved except the snap from Bentley You sometimes you see teams in an opener ball come start, out start. edgy offense, offense. number 55, 55. Five yard penalty, fourth down. And, and look nervous early on. We've seen sort of the opposite tonight. There's a pretty clean start, but opening night, as it wears on, as fatigue sets in, the mistakes have really built up, especially on the Louisville side. Yeah, and, and that's why, you know, everybody always looks forward to week two. You know, you go back, you look at the film, and there's so many lessons to be learned after getting out of camp. You, you, even if you win or, or if you lose, you, you have a chance to learn a lot. and come back and try to be a much better team by week two pass flushed looking downfield can he escape no I'll throw the ball away that has the look of intentional grounding as Julian Aquara 
had him. He was in the pocket. Ball did not get near the line of scrimmage, and there wasn't a receiver there. Yeah, though it is going to be intentional grounding. That's what they rule. Didn't matter. Notre Dame will take over up 18. 337 to play. Over on down. First down, Notre Dame. Timeout. So, Brian Kelly's team, about three and a half away from heading home at 1 and 0. How are you? Scott Van Pelt here. Hope you'll join us for Sports Center to wrap up week one of the college football season. Tom Herman stops by. Bo Nix as well. And coming off his third no hitter, Justin Verlander stops by. Also, bad beats, Chris, the plays that were significant to some. Folks, keep an eye out for those in the last 337. I was going to say, Scotty. <laughs> We have to it's add bad, one here. That beat potential a couple of different ways if you want to know the truth. There's a first down carry by Sebo Flemister running to the left and fresh legs. Picks up about seven. Next up for the Irish will be New Mexico. Ex Notre Dame head coach Bob Davey. Thankfully he's okay. Yeah. He was taken to the hospital after the Lobos last game with chest pains, but told he's been released. Then the game that everybody's been talking about, Georgia. It's a one of the toughest tickets in all of college football. They got to go at Michigan and then at Stanford late. Well, I mean, you got all these games. Boston College always a fun game when Notre Dame and BC play. But yeah, at Georgia, at Michigan, at Stanford, and they will have to continue to develop their passing game to have a chance to win on the road in those three venues. In addition, seven Notre Dame opponents have extra time to prepare before they play Notre Dame. And that's something that Brian Kelly is keenly aware of. Yeah, this is a this is a two by season in college football only happens about once every seven years. So right. Irish use their buys before Georgia and before Michigan. They use right. them well, which is good. Yeah, yeah. I, I just would like to say 35 17 to 30 to go. They, they, they got pushed a little bit more than they probably anticipated. This 14 14 into the first quarter looked like it'd be 14 all at half and then they caught a break and scored before they have to go up seven. But they got challenged here. Brian Kelly. I don't think he really minds that because you can go back as we talked earlier and learn from the mistakes. They've, their defense made some incredible adjustments against uh, pass and in, in this offense of Louisville's and really settled in and played much better after the first two possessions of the game. Work the play clock down on third and three. Blemister is going to be hit behind the line and drop. Tavarius Peterson grabbed him. Chick-fil-A bringing you the rankings and after all the action on a five day holiday weekend really the only ranked team to lose Lost to another ranked team, Oregon, knocked yeah. off my Auburn the other night in Arlington. Notre Dame sitting down there at nine with a 35 to 17 lead here. And, and we've been calling Notre Dame games for a long time since Brian Kelly has been here. The knock on them on a national level is when they get into a big stage against a high profile team that they don't quite have the speed or the depth. This team, I think, feels like it's a better team, a more complete team, a deeper team. We'll see how the season unfolds. Gap shrinking or growing true. between Notre Dame and the upper echelon. If you look at the, the postseason games against Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, outscored 116 to 45. And we need to cut that gap. So the Irish have the punt team on the field. Fourth and five at the plus 41. We'll disappoint some of their fans, but an 18. <laughs> Point victory on the road after a spirited start by Louisville. Remember, this game was 14 apiece. And Notre Dame really took control of the series of Louisville fumbles, undoing them. And it's just, just a field goal after halftime. It's 2 to Atwell at the 12. And it's a high punt that he will fair catch at the eight yard line. So we can close the book on Ian. Kind of a mixed night for Ian Book, returning starter. Made, made some runs early to kind of get the offense established. They looked like they were just going to control things, really, up front with the line of scrimmage. And a lot of his success came down when they did not have linebackers there to stop him from scrambling and creating. And uh, in the second half, he was able to get some time to throw and had more success in the second half throwing the football. But you can see that the touchdown on the ground and also one through the air. Yeah, nice touchdown throw to Tommy Tremble. Claypool took a couple short throws and made him into substantial gains, but not the downfield threat at all in this first game. And for Louisville, they can take positives out of an 18-point loss at home because of where they 
finish up last year. Pass gets the ball out quickly. He's going to still fight. Josh Johnson makes the catch. And you actually think you've seen enough from this team, attitude to, to put them in the potential bowl picture in the ACC. Well, I, I think, you know, they're going to have to win some non conference games and they have some tough games coming up. But I've seen enough from Juwan Pass to, and, and from the receivers to think that they're going to be able to compete with some teams this year in the ACC. Again, Eastern and then Western Kentucky here, and then they go to Tallahassee. You know, I mean, the Knowles hardly look unbeatable. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it, you look at Eastern, you, maybe we put their schedule up again. You look at Eastern and Western Kentucky, I mean, they play the way they're capable. You'd think that they have good chances of winning those games. They have Boston College, they have Florida State, Wake Forest on the road, Clemson, you can forget about. Batted in the air and caught on the carom. <laughs> Pass catches his own ball and he'll be dropped right there. Let's try. Let's try to add him up here. Okay. This is me adding him up. I'll say one win, two wins, three wins, four wins. I think they can win five. Yeah, they can win six. Just get there, huh? I think they can get to six. At Western Kentucky, don't don't go to still oh, no, the win there. I know. It's the Hilltoppers on the road. I know. Oh, wait a minute. We're going to show the ponies. Oh, my God. Last year in the this. slop. You didn't care no. how much I didn't have the seven. Well. I did not have the seven. I had the super, but I didn't have the seven. I had a try. I had the exacta, but I did not have the seven. You know what happened to the seven after 22 minutes? Taken down. I took him down. Guess what happened after that? I had all the I had all the other horses. So you, you had to so find your out, tickets. You threw your tickets threw in the ground. Because I was mad at the bear because he, he gave me everything but the seven. So I somehow I stumbled back up and I found the uh, all the tickets and I went up there and Turns out you win some money back when uh, when you have all those horses up at the top. That's weird. Yeah, I'm not I, used to that. I don't know if it was Kataya in the replay booth. Thankfully, in football, we've never seen a 23-minute delay. <laughs> yeah, or, come right. on, are you kidding it me? Took, it felt like an hour. <laughs> I bet it did. And I, and I just thought, oh, they'll move him from one to two. I'm still going to lose. And doggone it if they didn't move him all the way out. Uh, that makes up for a lot of years when things went the oh, other way. Yeah, okay. 20 years of losing. You know, I didn't even know you were allowed to win, actually. This will be the final play for Louisville. They had the Irish at 14 apiece. Turnovers, some breakdowns, but a lot of positive signs in game one for Scott Satterfield's team. This team did not quit and roll over. They fought for the Irish. Not maybe the clean, dominant performance Kelly had hoped for, but but enough. Yeah, absolutely enough. I think uh, you know, he's able to learn from some mistakes, learn from the things that went well. Both teams will get, uh, get a chance to clean it up and get ready for week two. You enjoy Austin for LSU, Texas next yes, week. We'll see you back in a couple of Washington weeks. Maria and Kirk, I'm Chris Fowler. Let's send it right now to Scott Van Pelt in Sports Center.